70 episodes na ang, uh, ang Yu-Gi-Oh! series at all. So, yay! Congratulations, Seven. But anyway, so let's run it down. Yung opening scene, medyo parang ano siya eh, parang drink sequence ni Yuga. Ito parang si Yuga after uh, after 70 episodes, we find out that he has um, uh, he has this phobia for ladybugs. So, oh, fifth elementary uh, had a field trip at ang nag-guide sa kanila si Gakuto. One of the clubs at Goa Fifth Elementary is the Dueling Insects Club. So, eh, we learning na sila ng, na, ng mga ibang clubs na um, these are troublemakers. So, well, um, true to their branding ng mga kaiskwela nila, ayun, they were eavesdropping on Yuga's lab. So, oh, nahuli sila ni Luke. Pero, uh, they were able to overpower Luke. Tapos itong, itong pinaka-leader nila, si, si, si Nana Ho, ano pala ito? Kababata pala ni Yuga. Now, uh, she has these strange hypnot- hypnotic powers at uh, ginamitan niya nito si Swirly. Eh, sa- sinabi lang niya kay Swirly, take me to Yuga. Hmm. Yeah. Sinamaan siya doon mismo sa laboratory ni Yuga. Nakit, nakita sila uli ni Yuga after so after so many years. According to the dream and this uh this we encounter ito pala talaga ang kinatatakutan ni Yuga. Dito nagsimula ang kanyang phobia for ladybugs. Yung itong itong character na to na mayroong mayroong sot-sot na sombrero ng ladybug. Team 7 is really uh, really did their best to calm him down pero to no avail. So, eh, sinabi na lang ni Lung, may probably to snap him out of it, challenge Nanoho to a rush duel. So, bang! The duel is on. Sa tindi ng takot ni Yuga for ladybugs, hindi siya makapokus sa duel. So, ang nangyari, Nanoho was dominating the duel. So, well, up to the point na um... 300 life points na lang si Yuga. Then, sa sobrang takot niya, he, he, yeah, he, he, he runs out of the duel. Then, syempre, um, Luke, being, uh, being his closest ally, sumunod sa kanya. Sabi ni Luke, Uy, teka muna Yuga, hindi pa tapos ang duel, saan ka pupunta? Nung hinawakan sa rito, I don't know, um, Luke's poly effect suddenly kicked in, kaya, Hindi lang yung electrical systems ng dual disc uh, ang nadamay kay Yuga, pati yung buong systems ng Goha. So, for uh, for a good one minute, down lahat sa Goha. Electronics and even even electricity, even power. Electrical power. So, uh, nagantay, nagantay, nagantay sila. Then, nag-reboot. Mm, after, um, nagbilang ng 3 seconds, ayun, everything is online na. So, what? Oh, Sinabi na lang ni Luke, Yuga, you were the one who challenged her to a rush duel. It's only, it's now up to you to stop her. No? Luke has a point. So, kumbaga, si Yuga naghamon, kailangan siya magtapos ito. So, balik si Yuga sa duelo. So, all of a sudden, uh, naalala niya, I need my maximum. I need my maximum. Draw 5. Kasi wala na siya kanin. Empty hand. Nakita niya. Mm, buo. Pero, uh, to some, to some strange event, naglaho yung, yung faces ng tatlong, yung tatlong maximum cards niya. Pero, may pumalit. Kumbaga, uh, in-explain niya later on in the duel. Yung poly effect down ni Luke, ang nagpasim ang ang cost dito. Kumbaga, ni-reformat din yung maximum monster niya. So, he comes roaring back in the, in the duel. He eventually beats na ako. With his new maximum. Uh, super... Basta si Magnum Overload to na ginawang, na ginawang battleship mode. What a way to introduce a new maximum monster. 
Well, you can say na, if you've seen the episode, you can say that the Dueling Insects Club ran with their tail between their legs. Final scene. Hindi lang pala si Yuga ang pake ni Nana ho. Meron pala siyang inutusang ladybug na 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 magsaksak ng, ng USB drive doon sa isang slot para makuha yung data ni Yuga. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what kind of data Yuga has that will interest her, pero yun ang nangyari. Yun ang ni-reveal sa final scene. So, looks like we have a new um, a new villain to handle. Hindi pa nga tayo nakaka-move on kay Yuga eh. Ito na na. May bagong may may may, may, may bagong sakit sa ulo na naman ng Team 7. Excuse me. So let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. You know, the dream sequence wasn't that, ano eh, wasn't that tense. The pacing picked up nung nagpakita ulit si Nana ko kay Yuga. So, kumbaga, na-reactivate yung phobia ni Yuga for ladybugs. Well, it was quite tough to watch because knowing uh, the main protag that has a phobia as, um, as meager as this, it's quite tough to watch, you know, especially if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan like me. Eh, nakadagdag pa ang ang tension sa pacing nung patano na si Yuga. So, well, it's the dual thing. So, whatever uh, whatever pacing the episode was uh, was currently in, that magnifies. Ganun nga nangyari dito. So, lalong na-magnify yung takot ni Yuga sa mga ladybug. Nakakaawa si Yuga. Right? He even, um, he even went to great lengths as to getting rid of this ladybug queen nung kumuha siya ng isang napakalaking canyon para lang, parang patay ng ladybug na to. Wow! Eh, talagang, if you didn't listen to Team Sevens, wala. <laughs> Baka wala nang go HQ ngayon. That's what the pacing will make you realize. Okay? The main protag has such a phobia. And it was caused by someone from his childhood na akala niya yung kaibigan niya. Sinabi na mismo ni Ranzen ito, pinsang buo nila si Nanaho. She and her twin brother came from the Nanahoshi clan. But there, there's a branch in that clan na talagang hindi kasundo ng, ng Sugetsu family. Yun ang talagang troublemaker. Nana ho comes from that branch of the clan. So, talagang, ang, talagang pamilya ng mga troublemaker to. They would go to great lengths as to control minds just to, uh, just to pursue their own interests. What does the pacing also tell us? Uh, the good guys are up, on, up against a more, we can now say, more evil villain than you the dual scene i tell you guys was really tough to watch and the pacing will make you also realize that talagang it's tough to watch kasi kahit although uh, nanalo in the end si Yuga it was really tough to watch kasi uh, Nana really took advantage of his phobia so ano siya so move lang siya ng move attack lang siya ng attack hanggang sa naging 300 life points na lang si Yuga but to the point that he even uh, and he even ran out of the out of the dual arena sa takot sa sobrang takot niya grabe pro naman first gear shift here was um was when Nana ho uh, made some mind control tactics on on Swirly ginamit niya si Swirly para makarating kay Yuga why did I call it a gear shift? Go bring your mga lifestyle. At this point pa lang in the episode, we now know how evil Danaho is. Alalahan niyo, kaedad ni Yuga to, kababata pa niya. And she probably knows every weakness Yuga has. At tapos dun sa final scene, nakuha pa niya yung data na nasa laboratory ni Yuga. So what? What the hell is she going to do with that? Is she a... Uh, scientific genius like Yuga, Neil, or even Yuo? 
I hope not. Because that will absolutely add up to her evil meter. Jaja ka pang evil meter yan, dude. To tell you, it's a pivotal gear shift. Final gear shift. Dalawa lang nakita ko. Is, well, when Yuga was able to introduce his new maximum. Let's just say in, a, in Neil's language, an act of providence by a cruel twist of fate. Ayun. Nagkaroon siya bigla ng, ng, ng panibagong maximum. So, let's just, well, let, let Luke have all the glory, Yuga. At least you got a new maximum, di ba? So, these two gear shifts that I saw, and you know, it'll be the first in a long time that I'm going to say this, but these two gear shifts in this, uh, in this anime will play a role in future episodes. Well, may bago maximum na si Yuga. Plus, we got introduced to a new, a new big bad. And we haven't moved on from Yuga yet. So, talagang uh, mabibigat na gear shift ang nakita ko sa, sa dalawang mga. Love life! Despite having a, despite having a dream sequence for an opening scene, malinis. Because you cannot discount um, that dream sequence. Uh, you can't, you can't take it out of the episode. It actually triggered the episode. So, namula tayo na. Yuga has this kind of a phobia. Wow! The main protag has this kind of a, of a phobia. I just couldn't uh, call it morbid fear kasi talagang phobia certified. And uh, has he gotten over it? Only time will tell. Kaya nang siguro na 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 get over yung phobia yun because he really needed to win now maga his sense of duty took over natural <laughs> he's the main product and he's now also in charge of the um, of uh, Goa's R&D department eh, so to speak kaya sense of duty malamang kaya malinis pa rin ang plot the main continuity of the episode was actually triggered by the dream sequence so face, flow, and plot. You don't get for this episode. I tell you guys, we are we have just been introduced to a new big bad in this series. She's probably more evil than you. Malama. Kasi um Kung titignan nyo, hindi naman, hindi naman talaga likas na masama si Yuho. He, he was only politically driven. Only uh, yeah, office politics drove him to, drove him to, such, to do such things. Pero ito, sinabi na ni, inuulit ko, sinabi na ni Rance in this episode. He comes from, from uh, that branch of the Nanahosi family who are, who are certified troublemakers. Talagang kahit anong katarantaduhan ang banggitin mo, they've done it. Baka gano'n ang gusto i-iparating i- na message ni Iranze sa atin. Bino mo ang viewers. Kaya, hmm. For up against another arch villain. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7, episode 70! Uh, tackled a uh, sort of a mini milestone episode for for this particular Yu-Gi-Oh series kasi episode 70 tatlong pong episode na lang magwa 100 episodes na rin ang 7 so, all goes well if this uh, well, I can sense the start of a new arc here kaya all goes well uh, 
we're gonna we're going to see another another arch villain uh, in this uh, in this anime. Pero uh, I'm very sure that some of you haven't haven't uh, moved on yet from Yumo being being the big bad. Because, well, we gotta move on guys because there's a there's a new big bad in town and this is probably more evil than you want deep seated na ang, ang, ang evil niya bata pa lang uh, musbus pa lang sila ni Yuga kay pabulasan ng ganito wow I would love to see a a Nanaho versus you will do it that would be nice the two um uh, the most recent big bad against the current big bad. Let's see who's the real villain. Huh? Don't do it, yo. Magandang episode yun, sigurado. Magandang episode yun. But anyway, let's just be happy for, for Seven's reaching their 70th episode and expect uh, greater things. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Seven's episode 70. We just have to do the drill, Mama Life. We will wait for next week and watch the next episode. I can't wait for uh, uh, how evil Nana Ho can get. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this time. We pick up where um where episode ten left off. Fena and Yuki Mouse reach the uh, the top of the staircase. Ayun, nasa Eden na sila. And while this was going on, Abel's entourage has well has finally gotten to the cave of treasures. Eh, hindi naman nila nadatna ng mga goblin goblin knights don. Pero na sense na ni, beforehand ni Tsubaki na parating na sila so nagtago muna sila so going back to Fena and Yukimaru they saw the remains of Noah's Ark right there so nagtaka sila but bakit nandito to? then uh, sequences later Yukimaru square off so naka talagang talagang fight to the death yung nangyari naputulan si Abe ng braso Si, pero nasaksak naman yung si Yukimaru dito. While this was happening, um, Abel's men are getting decimated by the Goblin Knights. So, balik tayo sa eksena ng Eden. Abel was, Abel was about to um, siguro finish off Yuki, both Yuki, ang nani ni Pena, si Helena. So, tinawag niya si Abel. And uh, Helena just said, Siyempre, naga, uh, use me, Abel. Oh, he- Helena just said, Abel, your role is complete. Both body and soul ni Abel, naglaho na parang bula. And now, she, she calls on her daughter, Fena. Parting shots na lang ni Helena ay ganito. Something to this effect. Again. <laughs> Fena, what comes next is up to you. And so slowly, uh, nawala rin si Helena. Then, Paolo, nagkapin muna siya as Franz Hauptmann. So, nagtaka na lang si... Bakit nandito si Cody? Nagpakilala na siya bilang The Observer. Kumaga, he, he made the entire story of Fena. Yun ang claim niya. What the hell? So, let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Face, second half of the episode naging tense dahil um, sinagupa na ng mga Goblin Knights ang mga tauhan ni Abel. Abel confronts yung Maru. So, tal- talagang, talagang pipick up med- pipick up ng bahagya ang face. But, excuse me. There was a sort of slow but excruciating pacing. Kasi yung, yung build up to um, 
to fill in Yukimaru's time in Eden, nandun eh. So, it's not too fast. It's not, it's not, um, uh, it's not too slow. Parang, I, but I could not say moderate kasi talagang slow and excruciating siya. Talagang, talaga, it, it felt like a real build-up episode. I'll explain later. Go naman! Well, first gear shift here was when they, when, uh, Chewbacca sent the, uh, sent Abel and his, uh, minions <laughs> to be near. So, basta humanap na lang siya sa entrance ng kweba, binunot, binunot na lang yung espada niyang ganun. Parang, he's, he's ready for a fight. So, nag-gets ka agad ang iba niyang kasama. Kaya, kailangan, tago muna sila. And, um, Think, think of a plan on how to on how to take them all out. Okay. And all Abel cared about was how to was to was to get to gear shift make make you realize. Simply lang. But Chewbacca and the others have already made the decision even before they they came on that island to protect Fena and Yukimaru. Uh, they've come to that consensus again. Dito sa episode nato. Kaya, yung um, solidarity ng mga Goblin Knights, this is what makes them deadly. <laughs> this is what makes them deadly, mga Knights style. How solid they are as a group. And talagang, number one objective nila is to protect Fena. Yeah, well, they did their job here. I guess they, I guess their role was finally, uh, they finally played their role. Second gear shift. Was when um, Abel confronts uh, Yukimaro and Fena. And ta- ta- timing na timing nga eh. Biglang dumilin yung, bigla dumilin yung langit eh. Nung pumasok pa si Abel. He will stop at nothing to, to be with Helena. At he is so obsessed with Fena's mother na tinatawag din niyang up to this point, tinatawag din niyang Helena si Pena. That's how obsessed uh, a maniac si. That's how maniacal Abel is. Kaya, nung napatay si Omari sa episode 7 or 8, siya na talaga ang naging, ano eh, ang naging boss villain dito. And, final gear shift. What's Bago ko din ako nag ship. Well, I, I can feel it in bones that the, what you call this? The finale will, um, will run on whatever Cody will, uh, whatever Cody's story is. Dito tatakbo ang finale ng Fena. Sa, ikik, siguro sa, merong ikikwento si Cody kung bakit Bakit siya tinawag, bakit niya tinawag sa sarili niya na The Observer? So, yeah. Cody has a lot of explaining to do. And, this vision will also make you realize that hindi mo sabihin, mo mo sabihin ko din mo lang yung pagiging assistant kay Abel. Looks that way. So, these three gear shifts definitely Everything's going to. All those three dishes will play out in the finale. Talagang na mararamdaman mo eh. Sa pagkaka. Pagkaka ayos ng episode na to. Now, plot wise. Yes. Do you really need another side story or backstory to this kind of an episode? You're already building up to the finale eh. So. It will take an entire episode to 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 get some sort of a build up towards the finale, which they did in this episode. Kaya whatever happened here, ang daling i dive, ang daling um uh, intindihin, because malinis siya ang plot. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. And I should say that it, it is an awesome build-up towards the finale. Talagang, oy, 
Wala. Based on the final scene alone, masasabi mo na, hmm, mukhang may nalalaman tong Cody na to. Sige, pakinggan natin pagdating ng finale. Ganun na nga. So, Pena Pirate Princess, episode 11. Whoop! All we have to do now is wait for the finale. Kaya, hindi ko lang patataganin yung review nito. Because, I too am excited as, as to how this anime is going to end. Nasi na pena eh. And Adam is gone, obviously. So, who is there to uh, from knowing what her true potential is? Cody? I did it. So, everything is up in the air. We just have to wait for the finale. So, again, Pen of Pirate Princess, episode 11. Thumbs up! So what do we do now? Siyempre! The drill! We wait for next week and watch that Dina. Watch finale of Pena. So in the meantime mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. We start the episode with, um, uh, I couldn't say it's a, um, a scolding bout from, uh, from Botan's grandfather. No, nope. it's far from that. The old man practically, um, told, uh, told, uh, the team of how he was able to talk to Nikola Tesla during his final moments on this plane of existence. He was lying. Uh, in bed at the New York Hotel kasi doon siya talaga pinatire. Um, he was dying already. But, in short, on his deathbed. So, uh, uh, Bottle's grandfather calls this uh, Tesla notes. So, yun nga, in-explain ni, ni Tesla mismo on, uh, on how these shards work. So, Dinokument niya pala lahat ng naging invention niya in these crystals. At ikinala niya pala ito sa buong mundo. Pero, there is a uh, deciphering program that he that he placed in all of these shards. And, well, it's uh, it's protecting the shards in, in such a way that after 100, exactly 100 years, it can now be deciphered. Kumaga maga unlock ng kusa yun. But if it's uh, unlocked by force, the world may come to an end. Sound to that effect. Hindi pala ibang bansa ang may interes sa mga shards na to. But it's another organization that Nikola Tesla himself revealed of its existence. It's called a small house. They have been operating since the middle of World War II. Their prime goal, uh, yeah, so to speak, is Tesla's shards, his technology. Of course, to use it for their own purposes. So, well, obviously the whole team is enlightened. Kaya, lana lang pa ang paghanap sa mga ibang shards. They're gonna uh, let that shard slide muna. Kasi, in one scene, mukang, uh, Mukhang na ibigay na sa, sa boss nila itong shard na nakuha ng A Small House. The team gets some well-deserved r and kasi talagang it has been, well, to us, a tense two episodes. So, doon mo na pinatira si Botan sa parang pinaka-dorm nila Kuruma at Iriyunosuke. So, yun nga, uh, may sinabi ni Botan, okay, for tonight, I'm gonna cook. Eh, mukhang ayaw ng dalawa. Yung pala, nalaman ni Bota na meron palang, meron palang gap ang, ang dalawang ito. All because someone forgot to take out the trash. Babo, no? Hindi mo na, ah, uh, inisip ni Bota niyo. Because she had school the next day. Ang baga, eh, exclusive girls school, eh. All girls sila. And, uh, her newfound acquaintance, 
uh, nalaman niya nito, binubuli pala ang girl na to ng tatlong, tatlong nilang kaklase. So, that drive in Botan to help this girl out talaga ang lakas eh. She even tried convincing Ryunosuke and Kuruma to help her out. Pero sabi niya ng dalawa, you won't expect us to to uh, to go on your school's grounds. No. Labas sa, sa usapan ng pagiging secret agent yan. But both of them have a point. Pero talagang gusto tumulong ni Botan. And uh, she has gathered enough evidence about uh, the girl that's bullying that girl. Uh, her name is Miyami. And uh, what? Anak. As expected, anak mayaman to. May boyfriend pala siya na medyo uh, talag hamak na mas patanda sa kanya. Si Miyami kasi 17 lang. Eh yung boyfriend niya well in his 20s. Oy! So, one night, uh, while Botan was figuring out how to, um, how to get back at this girl, eh, kumatok si Ryunosuke. Sinabi niya, sige, tutulong na rin ako. O, ito. Ito yung nasagaw kong, imp- uy, <laughs> yeah. May nasagaw na pala siyang impormasyon regarding uh, this Miami girl and her boyfriend. Okay, so, ito pala yan. So, ito pala. Okay, okay. So, alam mo na gagawin. Ngayon. Ngayon, on the night that uh, she actually infiltrated the, uh, yung kondo ng boyfriend. Kasi doon, doon mo na nag-stay si Miami kasi wala yung magulang. Daba eh. Mukhang magsesex na ang dalawang ito eh. So, sinabi ni, ni, ni Botan, Hoy, baka nakakalimutan mo. Minor yung girlfriend mong yan. Gusto mo bang ilaglag na kita sa pulis, yan palang pwede, ka na, pa, pwede na kita ipares to. Mukhang hindi natin ag- in a split second of misjudgment, na-overpower siya ng boyfriend. Then, well, surprisingly, who came to his, who came to her rescue? Si Kuruma. Pero, well, uh, Kuruma gave uh, wow, an awesome assist. So, sinabi nila talaga sa, sa dalawang sa dalawang hinayupak na to. Whether you apologize or not, the photos still remain. Kung hindi, kung hindi kayo magbabagong buhay, kami na mismo maglalaglag sa inyo. Ano? Sige, pag-isipan nyo muna yan. So, manisa lang sila. The next day, Miami um, asked for uh, Botan's acquaintance's forgiveness and isinoli pa niya lahat ng perang in-extort niya sa girl na to. Takot eh, no? Kasi, alam, alam na nila Botan at Kuroma that she smokes in public. She, well, her boyfriend uh, wants, uh, always has sex with her. And, uh, she lies to her parents. Yung palang, grounds na for expulsion sa kahit anong private school. Final scene. Another shard has uh, appeared. It's shard number 5. At may gumagamit pa talaga nito. Mukhang biyasa sa paggamit ng shard na to. Hmm. Bago problema. Excuse me. So let's break this episode down AR style. I'm feeling a little bummed. Pace. It's usually atypical for... Uh, for an episode that uh, that tackles bullying to have this kind of well, to have this tense amazing kasi you're involving secret agents in it at all uh, Studio Gambit handled it pretty well kasi uh, for a spy thriller anime uh, slice of slice of life uh, issues like this they're very rare the main protag is a 17-year-old, si Botan. So, naturally, uh, she goes to school. And when there's school, there's bullying. Parang hindi na matatanggan yung Asian yun sa basta may eskwelahan, you know? whether private or public. Ah, how sad. But anyway, it just goes to show you that through the through the pacing of this episode, 
we further we are further awakened of the issue of bullying at saka yung nakita, nakita rin natin dito yung whether she's a secret agent or not talagang gusto tumulong si Botan sa mga nakaapi kasi sinabi niya rito in a in one scene that if she can help enough other people uh, her life would be her life would have some meaning kasi kinwenta ng handler nila mataba uh, on what a little bit of uh, Botan's origins to Kuruma and Rinosuke her father abandoned her when she was a baby yung nanay naman niya namatay sa pangalak sa kanya yeah. that clearly explains how uh, Botan was raised by her grandfather yeah. Botan has a deadbeat dad and he's out there somewhere uh, pretending to have a single life deadbeats do that but anyway so that's what the basic will make you realize okay? nakaka-deep dive ang basic talaga ng episode there's a social issue being tackled. It's clearly atypical of of a spy thriller anime. Kasi uh, when it comes to spy thrillers, usually yung continuity from start to finish ng ng isang anime. Yan. But here, because the main protag is a teenager, she encounters such issues, and Studio Gambit had made the right call. Showing us that well, she may be a secret agent, but Botan is still a teenager. She is exposed to these kinds of uh, issues in life, like bullying, uh, uh, culture shock, so to speak. Flow the man. First gear ship here was. Uh, that when Ryunosuke and Kuruma showed signs of a gap. Yeah, kasi uh, gusto silang ipagluto ni Botan para salo-salo. May maliit na salo-salo lang. Just for the three of them to get acquainted with each other. Nothing wrong with that. Because typical Japanese lifestyle. Yung gusto bayran. Typical Japanese culture ang gusto bayran. She grew up in a traditional Japanese family. Why did I call this a leadership? Simple Because if they are to effectively function as a team, these kinds of issues need to be resolved. Mahirap na yung... yung may gap kayo outside missions tapos madadala nyo bigla sa isang mission yan. Bad idea very counterproductive even even when you're not even in a, even in uh even in the corporate setup that's counterproductive kasi pilang yung naging awa niya eh basura lang excuse me their quarrel started with just a heap of trash uh, eventually na solve ni Botan ang matter because uh, Kuroma comes from a remote prefecture of Japan wherein iba ang meaning na set aside the trash compared to uh, compared to someone of Ryunosuke's origin siguro city boy to si Ryunosuke iba ang dating sa kanya na set aside the, set aside the trash Kumbaga, ang dating sa kanya, uh, leave it alone. Parang ganun yung interpretation niya. So, uh, according to Botan, they're both right. Yun nga lang, magkaiba lang yung interpretation nila na set aside the trash. So, sinabi na ng handler nila, Ay, nako, magpati na nga kayo. Just shake hands and make up. Now. They did. <laughs> And all it took was a simple deduction by Bota. Kasi ni-reveal ni Kuroma on, uh, on his, uh, uh, where, where his roots are. So, he comes from this, uh, this area in Japan where he talagang 
uh, talaga ibang iba yung, yung kultura compared to the culture of modern Tokyo. So, eh, siguro dun galing si Rinosuke from modern Tokyo. Iba yung uh, interpretation niya of that phrase, of that particular phrase. So, they'll just have to uh, well, iron things out here from here on. That's why I call it a gear ship. Final gear ship was when they uh, infiltrated the uh, the boyfriend's condo. Why did I call that a gear ship? Simply that, well, not only was Bondan's desire to, to have others fulfilled, this is also a training exercise for them. If they can um, solve a, uh, a small problem like this, they'll be able to solve bigger problems. That's the way I see it. That's the way I see this gear shift. That's why I called it a gear shift. Kumaga. You can say it's a confidence builder for the entire team because they did something within the bounds of justice. Let's say it's a school job, but it's a school job to uh, Yung delivery ni Koro Compared sa Ginawang delivery ni Nun ni Bona Mas ano Mas Mas interface Yung delivery ni Koro Tumagos Tumagos sa utak ng dalawang Ng 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 dalawang minayupang ito So sa ito mo please come back sa'yo Because of Koro mas that's what, that's that's also what this uh, this gear ship will make you realize. Cause it, it made me realize something. It made me deep dive. That's why I call it a gear ship. So these two gear ships that I saw, the first one will play a role in this game. Cause if you don't see the mission, then you can't tell me that Kuruma and Ryunosuke are the same mission. They might not. It'll need life and death for Bota Kasi siya nang talaga nasa Siya talaga kung sumasaba sa kanya If these two don't communicate really well It may be the death of Bota Plotwise Except for The grandfather's backstory about Tesla About Tesla's final moments Malinis ang plot you couldn't discount that backstory at all. No matter where or how you see it, it's an all important backstory. Kasi, ikiniwento ng lola ni Bota kung paano kung paano siya pinakusap ni Nikola Tesla before Tesla passed away. And ang ibinibig ni Tesla sa kanya. The shards have been tampered with. It's up to you to gather them all. The small house should have waited 100 years. The way I see it here based on the plot. It is a fact that Tesla's technology is being suppressed. If Tesla's technology becomes public, who needs these power companies? There's some sort of truth to uh, to to this fictionalized uh, storyline that Tesla Note is following. There's some truth to it. That's what this plot will make you realize. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. I don't know about you, Maka Life Stat, but uh, that that uh, anti-bullying mission. Uh, Botan and Kuruma, the, 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 the team actually did, that can be a confidence booster. Because they get to uh, uh, 
they get to stop a bully. Kung ito lang na nasot nila, they don't have enough confidence to get back into the case of the of the shards of Tesla. So, Tesla Note Episode Three. Here's the main reason why I gave it the two thumbs up. It is rare for a spy thriller anime to tackle a social issue. Very rare these days. Well, in uh, probably in the 70s and 80s, it's it's more uh, it's more frequent. But these days, it's an absolute rarity. Uh, to, to tackle the subject of bullying in a spy thriller anime hmm, kakaiba excuse me personally hats off to Studio Gambit for this episode like ang nai, naisingit pa nila ang, ang subject ng bullying sa isang spy thriller anime I thought hmm, this anime is going places at the end of the day, mga lifestyle, it's the story that matters. I do not give a fuck if your if your number one priority is the animation. Know this: if you judge an anime solely or number one on its animation, I need to break the news to you, but. You being an anime fan is just superficial. Mapapaw lang ang pagiging anime fan mo. You are no otaku. Because a true otaku always deep dives into an anime. We see past the animation. That's the sign of a true otaku. So again, Tesla Note, Episode 3. So what do we do now, my friends? Simple as pie. Wait for this one. Watch that episode. Enjoy the reviews. Well, let's run it down a bit. So we got. Generally, two stories in one episode. Because the the whole two parts. If if you don't know, well, the first story was you remember the girl who whom Jollop is and charmed with in the last episode. Yeah, her name is Vice Captain Hinaichi. At sa opisa, paniwala ng paniwala siya na na malakas na vampire lord si Jollop. So she was actually begging her captain to uh, to handle the surveillance on this particular vampire. So uh, while her her request was being processed, eh, she took the liberty of uh, literally following uh, Jalo around, kai kasama pa niya para si Ronaldo. So well, uh, she found out that um, konting Bungo lang, konting hampas lang ng fly swatter ni Ronaldo. Eh, nagiging abo na siya pero she is literally misinterpreting all the facts. Na kaysa na hulo sa poison swamp, na may itinatago toto ng kapangyarihan. Merong he cares about kids. That's why he's hiding his true power. Then, uh, one incident uh, made her conclude that Jalo <laughs> is pathetic as fuck. Okay, so, get it, Dian. A vampire mosquito was actually after Jalo. 
So he tried his best to evade it. He even used uh, John as a shield. Then, of course, well, who came to his rescue? Ronaldo. Isang anti-vampire flies water lang ang oh, pinang tapat na do sa sa vampire na labok. Patay. Then, uh, sa inis niya, hinampasan din niya si Dralok ng that same flies water. Hinap, hinampasan niya sa ulo ganun. Hindi naging abo. Eh, pinagalitan niya si Dralok for using John as a shield. Eh, tapos yung tatlong batang tinulungan nila, uh, they started uh, insulting both of them. Eh, sinabi ni Ronaldo, Hoy! Sound to this effect. Umuwi na kayo sa mga nanay niyo. Mga buisit. So, man, that's where he and I she concluded that <laughs> this is a vampire lord. Um, everybody can trust, yeah. So, pagbalik sa sa headquarters nila to well, to somewhat report uh, her investigation, na approved na raw yung request niya na to become uh, to to be the uh, what you call this. To handle the case of uh, Dralok, much to her dismay. <laughs> so, pina report na siya nun. Now, second story was actually the uh, it's the two part uh, story that I was uh, referring to kanina. Kaya naging two part kasi there's this gay vampire hunter who wants to make uh, Dralok her slave. Kasi na balitanya na si Ronaldo meron pa lang meron na pala siyang kakamping vampire yun nga si Dralok eh nakita niya kung gano'ng ka-weak si Dralok so sinabi niya kay Ronaldo Uy, Ronaldo akin na lang ito sige na in typical in typical Becky fashion but Ronaldo said no eh ngayon um, uh, hinamon siya ng gay vampire hunter na to uh, hinamon niya sa isang uh, sa isang race to three na contest Whoever wins that race to three gets Dralok. Okay, bye, si Ronaldo. Because Ronaldo saw this as a uh, as a good way of disposing Dralok himself. Okay. So, see, first two contests, then all of a sudden a call from his publish his editors came. So, nagbatali siya ano? Uh, nagpunta rin siya munang lumabas sa, sa bar na pinag, na pinag kumbaga it's a, it's, a, it's a gathering place of vampire hunter, vampire hunters kasi yung guild master nila ang may ari so kinausap niya eh uh, well received daw yung uh, yung pagkakaalay niya kay Dralok now Ronaldo feels the need to to keep Dralok by his side so okay balik sa contest the next match pinanalo niya next match pinanalo niya okay so sabi ni sabi ng kalaban niyang gay vampire hunter gusto, gusto mo ano lang ang huling contest involved na si Dralok ginawa mo na lang abo si Dralok tapos sinaksa ka ng cross pare di pare di siya mag pare di mo siya mag regenerate parang tano talaga si Ronaldo eh. uh, somehow Ronaldo wins okay talagang tinalo niya fair and square eh may mga kapanya vampire hunters na talagang uh, saw through his game talagang ano ba yung first two yung first two yung unang yung dalawang talo talagang nakalata ng mga vampire hunter na to talagang pinatalo ni Ronaldo so also well and well Dralok still uh, uh, gets gets to be gets to go home with uh, with Ronaldo pero ang <laughs> ngayon naman ang gusto maging laruan nitong gay vampire hunter na to ay si Ronaldo <laughs> eh ngayon sige pinagpiesta na siyang panoorin ni Dralok kasi ko ng Dralok takon nila kayo eh gino ginawa mo kung premyo sa contest yung yan eh bahala ka sa buhay mo <laughs> isang gatas nga ka <laughs> you know I, I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't declare a final scene in this uh, in this type of episode kasi dalawang 
dalawang story to eh so pero uh, it's it's <laughs> uh, let's just let's just break it down ARD style pace understandable yung yung bilis ng pacing kasi uh, they want to uh, Madhouse wants to wants to tell two stories in one episode but it's understandable kasi tingin mo kaya with a comedy anime like this dapat pabagalan yung pace <laughs> You know, uh, the faster the pacing, the more hilarious the episode is. Ganon yun, eh. ganon ang uh, ganon ang ganon ang workings kasi sa isang comedy anime. Now, uh, this anime's episode is no different. Talagang uh, swag lang yung ganito ng klase ng pacing dito kasi comedy anime nga eh. Kung papagalan mo ang pacing ng episode na to, wala, hindi matatawa ang audience. Hindi matatawa ang audience. Kaya ano ako, praise with the pacing. Flow naman ba? Biggest gear shift I saw in, uh, in the first story was when Hinaichi was finally, she saw the light when it came to Dralok. Na hindi na dapat Uh, pag suspecha ang si Dralok bilang isang malakas na vampire lord talagang he is weak and pathetic as fuck pero uh, ang hindi pa niya alam yata na his knowledge of the vampire hierarchy will serve any vampire hunter really well kaya swerte si Ronaldo that's what this gearship is telling me so potential ally for uh, for our favorite tandem 90% sure Biggest gear shift naman ng second story is yung pagkakatawag ni ni Hanoka kay Ronaldo regarding uh, his uh, his Chronicles Volume 2 yung, yung performance Bob nakita kasi ni Ronaldo na uy ba, hindi ko akalain na isang inexpress na autobiography eh, ay kikita ng ganun in sales He now sees uh, Tralok as a cash cow, so to speak. Kasi, well received daw, according to Hanuka, yung uh, Chronicles Volume 2, yung pagkakakup-kup niya kay Tralok. So, <laughs> wow. Talaga na naman, ang tawag ng pera. Ayan, it already bit uh, Ronaldo. So, It's a no-brainer of a gear shift kasi kung wala itong gear shift na to, hindi siya ba mamotivate lang ipanalo yung, yung race to train na yan eh. Just to keep Dralok by his side. Kasi kung ipagpapatuloy pa niya no, yung pagpapatalo, wala. <laughs> he, he, he has no hurt. He has no reason to... Uh, He will have no reason to, to write for you today. So, pakay na naman sa editor niya. So, these two gear shifts that I saw. Wow. Definitely played a role. Definitely uh, played roles in their respective stories in this, uh, in this episode. And... Siguro, uh, the first gear shift. Alam, sigurado, he will play a role down the line in this act. Yeah. Looks like we've uh, Looks like Dandy must just found another Unlikely ally in Hinaichi Plot boys Plotjado Hindi ko pwedeng uh, I-judge to as many things Kasi nga uh, Two different stories in one plot Pero Bang nyo It's a well ironed out plot Talagang yung transition From one uh, story to the other Episode 
this um, him um, oh, Dralox uh, incidences where he, he just turns to sand <laughs> just turns to ash it's hilarious so the vampire dies in no time episode 3 of his team were called in to to take out another uh, another scarred pero mahirap pa lang patayin ito it goes underground they don't know when when it's going to strike so kumbaga uh, aiming blind sila dito kahit meron pa silang uh, tinatawag na sanity anchor yung pinaka handler nila si Sumire moment of uh, bopolness uh, siguro in misfires narattle yung scarred at the moment when they actually had this uh, had this for the killing bigla tumakas the chain of events that sparked this episode were this one uh syempre si Sihan uh ang nag-uumpisa ng sisihan si Sumire she was actually blaming Sigure for it Sigure had to yeah had, had to get some thinking for himself but nga ba Bakit ako may kasalanan? Uh, he was he was already placing the blame on himself na. Then, oh, habang naglilinis sila, uh, kumbaga clean up duty kasi wala uh, habang wala silang ginagawa. He found this idol magazine in the uh, in the storage room which has Sumire's picture on it. So he thought, "Ba, dati pa lang underground idol si Sumire." So uh, while they were having lunch, tinanong niya kay Sumire, uh, Were you an idol once? Ayos siya sagutin. Then, uh, in another encounter, she, he asked Sumire, what was, it, uh, what was it like to be an idol? And, ano, so, so tinanong ni Sumire, what, were you what are you driving at? Eh, sinabi niya, I'm sorry for... Um, 
for just asking you that kind of a question. So this is another thing. Nung lunch time nila. So Miri had no choice but to spill the beans already. Yes, I was an idol. Pero, um, things didn't work out. Then, another mission call. Oh, they were called in again to take out this same card na nakataas sa kanila. Eh, sin- siniguro doon na ni Commander Vera, she asked this question. So, what's this effect again? I'm sure na, I'm sure that you won't screw up this time. No, ma'am. <laughs> so, so, they, so, so, they proceeded and nagkaroon ng plan, nagkaroon ng idea si Sumire on how to, uh, uh, on how to draw this card out in the open. Okay. Sabi niya, si Sigure at si ano yung sapanin ng babaeng kasama? To fire, uh, to fire on the sand. Repeatedly. Wag kayo titigil lang ganyan ko sinasabi sa inyo. Alright. So, ang, ang deduction pala ni Sumire dito, it shies away from noise. So, ayun nga. So, yung lugar na pinag, uh, pinagraratratan nila sigure, lumayo yung scarred. Nakita, nakita, nakita ni Sumire sa mga sensors. Okay? She saw it in her sensors na lumayo na lumayo na yung yung um, yung scarred and at that moment she had Larry follow it sooner kasi ang ang reason niya sooner or later it has to come out to breathe properly so, ayun nga o sundan nyo na si ano ayun lumabas nga then ayun uh, with their with their fives in hand siguro at saka yung isa niyang kasamang babae ayun they started they started firing away at this card and enough to disable it pa when it's lying on the ground yun tumira na si yung XO nila cut cut several of its tongues away and for the finisher stabs the core patay so uh, when they came home kinupront na ni sumira si Sigure and uh, still more beans. Yes, I was an idol, pero I wanted to be the top sleeper. Pero due to due to her failing the qualification exam, hindi na siya pwede. She was uh, she had no other choice but to work as a sanity anchor for for this team. Amaya, turn out well for me. Wala na dumating ka. <laughs> so, naging naging uh, what you call this uh, naging at is na si Sigure final scene pinatawag pala siya ni ni Vera through through through, through their XO Commander Vera got straight to the point she wants Sigure to assassinate someone but uh, she's free and he is free to turn this one down <laughs> ano to so, let's break this episode down ARD style. Face, the opening scene was uh, was quite tense because um, the lead characters don't know what to do with this card. Because they're underground and they're pa, So, madali siyang gumalaw. Then, umulit na ang ang 10 spacing na to nung, when, when they were called in again to take up this, this, this same card. Oh, they were, they were successful the second time. I remember this kind of facing sa Evangelion eh. Because, um, I think it, well, it was one of those, one of the episodes where in si Asuka nagkaroon ng mental breakdown sa kalagit, sa kalagit na ng laban. So, they were forced to withdraw. Nagkaroon nga ng, whoops, uh, contemplation period between team members. Ganon din dito sa, sa episode na to, in Deep Insanity. It, the pacing reminded me a lot of Evangelion. Because, uh, Evangelion had a psychological aspect to it eh. Kasi, uh, all three members have dysfunctional, uh, have issues, basically. <laughs> they all have issues. Pero, 
it's not as complicated as Evangelion yung, yung pacing dito but you you, you get to you, get, you can completely understand what uh, the lead characters are going to because they, they screwed up the first time there came the period of concentration that was uh, everyone um, Shimire goes into blame mode uh, Shigure makes himself accountable for it because he really I don't know why he's been rattled because of this card. But, it's a bad thing here. Eh. So, expected, it's a bad thing to screw up like this. That's what the spacing will make you realize. But, the spacing of this episode will also remind you of Evangelion. Because this is the... I don't know, because out of the blue, I just recalled that there was... That Evangelion had an episode with, with, with this kind of a pacing. Anang ganun eh. So, it, took, it really took me back to the days of Evangelion. Blow naman! First gear shift here was when, yeah, the opening scene. Because, bakit ko tinawag na gear shift? It's it It triggered the entire episode. Because of that screw up of theirs. Ayun. Like I said a while ago, to me they goes into blame mode. Um, Shigure felt accountable. So, talagang, umaga, nasa feeling out stages pa rin ang team na to. Kasi, nasisisihan pa eh. So, that's what this uh, gear shift will make you realize. Second gear shift was during uh, the time when Shigure and Shigure would, uh, call this, uh, We'll talk about Sumire's idol pack. Yung nag-meet sila sa hallway. If you haven't seen the episode. If you've seen the episode already. Yung nag-meet sila sa hallway. So, why did I call it a gear shift? Kasi, it's obvious that Sumire is not, uh, it's not uh, the tell-all type when it comes to her pack. Hindi siya makwento. But through Sigure, somehow, uh, she was able to open up to someone on her own team about her past. Pero, not all. Kasi, there, there was a, uh, uh, there was a recollection sequence there na, na, makatuha ng si Sumire. And she was taking, she was taking pictures of. But you know how corrupt the idol industry is. There you go. Maybe, it was, maybe that was the reason why she left the idol business in the first place. And naga sumubuk na magi si first. That's what this viewship is uh, making me do dive into. But she is slowly telling someone of her issues. Okay, pwede maging issue to later on when it comes to uh, dealing with this card. Ako mangyari. Baka lumabas ito. Hindi siya ito batil. There's a, uh, there's a good chance. Final gear shift was when the time when, when they completely, uh, when they were successfully taking out this card at muli na sila si Gure. Uh, si Sumire naman na sumalubong kay si Gure. And, and in, in essence, he, she's thanking Sigure for for being uh, affirmative, for being a yes man, <laughs> in her own words. Bago din ako nag-gear siya ito, simple lang. Through this kind of a uh, uh, conversation, they are slowly becoming a team. Sigure is slowly being accepted into this team. Sumire has now realized Sigure's worth on this team. Uh, si Sigure pa nang napapagsabihan yung kanyang issues. This is good for, for overall uh, for the overall team dynamic. These three gear shifts that I saw definitely will play and the first two. The first two, I see the way I see it, it will play a role in this anime, down the line. Plot-wise, 
malinis. Although, Sumire had a um, kind of dream sequence here, pero you can count that out or you can count that out already. It does it did not disturb the main continuity of this episode kasi. Bottom line. That's why the plot is still changed. The, the dream sequence wasn't actually uh, a part of the overall continuity of the episode. Pero, it confirms that Sumire had issues. So, yung deep dive, yung pagka-deep dive sa kanya siguro ay justified. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. So, okay, slow and flat. We all came together for this episode. And, hmm, I really want to know why Vero wants to, wants Shiguri to assassinate someone. Kung baga, binabang on niya yung, uh, yung kagustuhan na, kagustuhan ni, si, ni Shiguri na maging bayani. I don't know what, well, I don't know, I really want to know why. Kaya, we have to find out in the next episode. So, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 2? Montama. Bakit? What? I wasn't totally convinced at how um, Sumire's issues were presented here. Kasi... Kung ibabase nyo sa dream sequence ng episode na to, dapat ano eh, uh, dapat malalim yung, yung pinaghuhugutan ni Sumiri dito. But, the way uh, her issues were presented here, parang ano eh, ang lamya eh. It's um, half-ass in English. Yeah, it's half-ass. Still for me. Okay, they're the anime school behind me. Uh, this anime. This should take uh, lessons from the animators of, Ev- of Evangelion. Kasi talagang uh, well, talagang malalim yung pagkakapresent nila sa mga issues ng bawat isang lead character here. Asuka. Lalo si Asuka. She has anger issues na uh, I think in one episode talagang uh, gumulo sa plano ng, ng team. So, they really presented it uh, graphically, pero may, may deep dive factor na kasi. I, I could not um, see it here. I could not see it uh, in the way they here, in the, in the way they presented Sumire's issues. Kasi, dream, mo, dream sequence, mukhang inabuso siya rito when she was an idol. So, that can have a negative psychological impact on Sumire herself and, God forbid, the team. W- wala pa siya nasasabihin dito. So far, si Suguri pa lang. But she hasn't told all. Especially that part. Marina, na, nakita natin siya na nakatwalya lang. Then someone is taking pictures of her. Pero yung pagkakapresent dito It's half ass The way I see it Kaya one top of the video The centerpiece of this episode is to me with issues Because of these issues of her Hindi siya Ano eh Hindi Maku-curious sa kanya si Shigure. That can present, uh, these issues of hers can present problems in, uh, along the way, down, uh, down the line in this anime. Pero, the way they present it, parang, ano eh, parang, baliwala eh. They should have presented to me this issue here with, uh, with such emphasis that, it may play a role in this anime. Kaya nga, Deep Insanity ang title. So, one of your, your lead characters has 
these kinds of issues. Tapos insan tapos sanity anchor pa siya ng team. Whoa, teka. <laughs> oh, we we may have a problem later on. Pero yung pagka present I think they're not uh, looking at this thing long term pero if you look at it talagang baka magkaroon ng problema ito eh pero hindi present ng hindi present ng ganong kalakas it didn't make the viewer understand that the sanity anchor of the team has these kinds of issues which can present a problem later on in the anime for our lead character probably for Shiguri himself the main protag yeah Shiguri should have um, should have presented Sumire's issues with a lot more with a lot more emphasis nagkulang sila dito nagkulang talaga so again Deep Insanity The Lost Child Episode 2 character development training ni Dia K for him. Number one doon kung gano'ng karaming mana meron si Lu. So, she tested it out with a far stone that is exclusive to to her clan. Ayun, no, nalaman niya kung gano'ng karami at kung gano'ng kalakas ang mana. Both of that far stone. Binato sa ere. Nuclear explosion. <laughs> Alas nawasak yung buong bahay. Eh, siyempre, nagtaka yung magulang. Uy, bakit? Ano, ano to? Bakit biglang sumabog lahat ang pindahan natin? So, much to... Um, much to the excitement of the father. Ayun. Keep it up, sabi lang niya. Sa dalawa. And then, sabi niya, uh, he's, again, he's proud of his son. Kasi, he's learning... Lou is learning fast when it comes to magic. So, the days have passed. Lou is becoming really good at magic. Then, um, what's called this? Document all the spells she knows. Pero, meron din siyang idea na pinropose na kay Dia. What if you can customize your own spells? Something to that effect. Ginawa ni Nisan, Oy! Pwede pala! So, um documenting these spells. Kung ka, kasi based on attribute eh. So, figure out ni Lu na, hmm, para may, para may duda ako rito. Okay. So, if it's based on specific gravity, atomic weight, talagang, wow, takes, took me back to chemistry class. So, okay. Kung ganito, kung ganito, kung ano natin, hindi nila nalagay, kung ganito nila natin nilalagay. We're able to produce Wow, metals like they were now able to to create magical weapons. Grabe. So nakakagawa na sila ng sarili nilang rival. Lu even uh crafted his own nuclear cannon kasi ganoon kalakas eh. It was able to destroy a hill in the forest. <laughs> Nabura sa mapa. Yung burol na yun. When he, when he, when he tested it up. Pero, uh, one shot lang kasi na-damage na yung barrel. It wasn't thick enough to to withstand the blast of the to withstand the blast of the um, of the projectile. So, talagang, they were having break, they were having breakthroughs in magic na 
na ngayon lang nakikita ni ano ni Dia. Medyo naging close na sila ano eh. Tingin yung dagger si Lu para kay si Dia. And in turn Dia gave Lu a far stone, a new one. So, eh, sabi, eh sabi naman ni Dia, I give you this if and only if you uh, you do what I, you, you do what I want next time. Eh agree naman si Lu. Right. Then final scene. It was high time for Lu's father all, uh, all his training, his knowledge to uh, execution na lahat ng nakakulong doon. So, they, this really small room. Wow. It's disturbing enough to assume, to make you assume that it, this is a torture chamber. Meron doon nakatali na babae. So, she was sentenced to death for the crimes of murder and robbery. Noong una, hindi niya, ano eh, uh, gumagawa siya ng mga excuses. Hindi naman ako may alam, napalitan ako doon eh, napalitan ako na sila patayin eh. So, well, sabi, ni, sabi ng tatay, ang tatay niya kay Lu, Lu, kill her as you seem fit. Agar, he explained, you'll eventually die of blood loss. Bye-bye. Eh, so, tumalikod na siya, uh, much to, much to his father's surprise. Then, what? Let's just say, ay, nakikira lang sila eh. Nakikira lang sila, nakikira lang sila sa pagnanao. Kaya ako pinapenda lang ang matandang yun eh. And I hope you die. I hope you fucking die. Ganun, 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 ganun yung babae. What? Lou got pissed off. He throws the dagger. Pah! Dito. Although hindi pinakita, pero I'm very sure. Kumira na pagka-assassin ni, ni Lou rito. He was going for the head. Through, probably through the dagger at the at, at the woman's head. Patay. He just made his first kill in this new world, folks. So let's break this episode down ARD style. Face. The facing was moderate. All throughout. Although the final scene uh, medyo kumikas yung face kasi uh, overall the facing was moderate but very satisfying. Bakit? Kasi, kung you probably will not appreciate the character development the main protagonist has ha, went through in this episode. Because he really wanted to learn magic. Kasi yun ang usapan is I'm gonna teach you. Sige. I will hire an instructor for you to, to so, I'll hire someone to teach you magic. E ang galing niya. So, what? His father had to live up to his end of the bargain. Hmm. Uh, his father hires Dia to teach him magic. Pero, um, much to, uh, to discuss with the both his parents, talagang, wow! Talagang, ang pangalapang natin ito ay isang henyo. Ang bilis po ni, uh, sa sorpresa, sa pagiging prodigy ni Lu. Yung, uh, what you call this? Yung aura ng character development ni Lurie na hindi natin maka-appreciate talaga. So, this is the development episode for the main soul tag. We just got a glimpse of, of what he's currently going to just to become the world's finest assassin in this. Uh, he has gone just to, just to eventually kill the hero. Yun ang objective niya. Yan ang pasapit. Ah, uh, nasunod. Flo naman. First version here was uh, when Dia uh, was able to gauge kung kung gano'ng karami at gano'ng kalakas ang mana ni Lu. Because malakas ang mana ni Lu, teachable ito. Well, she, uh, she got, she was flabbergasted as to how as how powerful loose mana is. So, ito nga siguro, ba, pwede ko nang i-advance course to. Malakas ang mana nito eh. And, mabilis siyang pumick up. Yun ang, yun ang kagandahan kay Lu. He is a prodigy. So, and, he's also teachable. 
Because not all prodigies are teachable. Okay? Tandaan nyo yan. Even, even in anime. So, this, what, this is what this uh, gear shift will make you guys. Ang laki ng potential ni Lu na umasenso sa mundong ito. And, uh, but mainly because he chose the right skills and attributes before he got reborn. So, it is now serving him well. Kaya, you can now go back to episode 2 with those gear shifts that I saw there. Was when uh, both Bia and Lu realized that, boy, we don't have to wait for for God to give us uh, spells to recite. So, nalam, na figure out nila, unang-una ni Lu, na pwedeng gamitin ito dito. Pwedeng itong word, wording sa to dito. So, kumbaga, nag-mix, nag-mix and match sila ng mga spell phrases. Ayun, they came up with um, spells that can make them create gold, uh, titanium. Unang-unang una nga, based, based solely on science eh. Kasi, kinukonsider ni Luri ito yung atomic weight ng isang element, yung specific gravity. You know how hard it is. You know how hard it is to compute the factors yung yung nagibasihan ni Lurito eh. Oh no. Sure. Uh, magical weapons. Mo, rifle. Tapos um, sumugal si Lu, gumawa siya ng canyon na na super lakas na tapos huge. Parang yeah, it nuked the hill. Okay. Right. The possibilities of Lu becoming from 75 to 90 percent. Tapos in the uh, well, in the third, is, what does this gear shift? What is this gear shift telling me? Hindi lang inilabas na ni Lu ang kanyang pagiging assassin dito. On why he is the world's finest assassin world. Sa, sa totoong mundo. So, things are looking up for the main protag based on these three gear shifts. So, definitely, these three gear shifts will play a role down the line in this anime. Plot-wise. Paninis. It's an all-important character development episode for Lou. Kailangan ba maghalo ng side or backstory dito just to, just to, just to, uh, to make the audience understand what is going on? Nina! <laughs> yes, it's pointless. Just stick to the main continuity of the episode. After all, it is a character development episode for the main protag. Kaya dapat dun lang, dun lang dapat yung focus ng audience para... Lalo ma-appreciate ng audience kung ano pinagdadaanan ng main product ang goal niya. Learning magic isn't easy. Especially for someone who was born into a clan of assassins. Hindi ganun kadali rin yun. Pin- kumbaga, pinagbigyan lang siya talaga ng father niya na aralin ito because he has learned everything from his father already. Kalinis ang plot. Kung hindi ganito kalinis ang plot, I think I appreciate the, uh, this episode as a whole. So, pace, flow, and plot, we all came together for this episode. Talagang, uh, it's also a build up for the next. Kasi, mukhang hindi pa tapos dito ang character development ni Lu eh. He just made his first kill. At sigurado may susunod pa dito. Para lalong, uh, kasi, hinahasa na siya ng tatay niya na maging assassin. And sinabi ng father nito, um, Maripet. Medyo, naging bal si, si Lumi Bagu niya ngayon. Anyway, great news for the next episode on what, on what could possibly happen there. So, ang Satsuki Zoku episode Three? Hindi ko na makakalimutan. Oh! <laughs> Two thumbs up! I am not going to uh, going to dilly-dally anymore with this uh, review. All I can say now is this. 
if there's more character development in the next episode Lou really wants to know everything he can just to kill this hero who knows the target pretty well and well he's done that before kasi he even po he posed as a chef before kaya sa marun magluto he even posed as he, I think he even posed as a prostitute already male prostitute because siguro meron sa mga meron din mga pinatagit sa kanya na na sugar mommy na Becky pwede rin sa tandaan niyang yun sa tagana niya bilang assassin God knows what God knows what <laughs> kaya let's just wait for the next episode so again on Sasuke Zoku episode 3 What do we do now? Of course, not lifestyle. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya. <laughs> Basically. Lang karon ng chancy comedy ko na well to communicate through her cell phone. She was able to 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 talk to Tadano over the phone. Pero medyo nahihiya pa siya kung uh, sabihin ko nung talagang gusto niyang sabihin. So, instead of um, speaking her mind out or heart out through uh, over the phone to Tadano, sinabi lang niya yung, yung usual na sinasabi ng cell phone pag BC out of coverage area. Grabe. Before that, uh, the first story, we get to meet uh, their new, Komi's newest friend. Ito pala si Agari. Meron din, siyang, uh, meron din siyang communication problem. She gets stressed out when someone talks to her or even looks at her. In the case of Komi, syempre, hindi naman siya... Uh, Komi couldn't start a conversation by herself. So, ang nagiging dahilan siya, titigan na lang yung taong gusto niyang kausapin. <laughs> this creep agari out. So, uh, pero na, na overheard niya yung yung uh, conversation nila Komi at ni Tadano. So, she completely understands na that she wants to be Komi's dog. <laughs> eh, yun, sinabi ni kasi Tinanong siya ni Tata, no? You wanna be friends with Komi? So, eh, natuwa. Talaga natuwa yung babae. So, nadagdagan na ang inner circle ni Komi. So, on to the cell phone. Well, uh, she was even trying to uh, get the phone numbers of uh, of her of her closest friends right now. Yan, si Tata, no? Si Najimi, si Agari. Uh, she was able to to get um, una kay Agari then kay Najimi ang huling huli pa si Tadano eh sinabi pa ni Tadano sige I'll have your cellphone kinumpleto niyo yung information wow pati address <laughs> eh, eh so he he saw the expression on Kobe's face sabi ni Tadano wow na appreciate niya <laughs> and well, the final story uh, was about um, Najimi playing a parlor game in uh, class in in their in their home room. Eh, medyo naiingan yung sumali si Komi. So tinanong siya ni Tadano, gusto mo sumali? Tika! Eh, no, nauna na, nauna na naman siya ni Najimi na imbitahin si Komi. Eh, well, Najimi has evil intentions right now kasi he, it's a sort of challenge to Tadano. So, sa loob-loob lang niya, ano gagawin mo ngayon, Tadano? <laughs> so, well, eh, napasali dalawa. Ang nakakatawa rito is this. Everybody needs to, needs to say something Para 
uh, until until the end para manalo. That's the that's the gist of the entire the entire parlor game scene. And di pa naman makapagsalita si Komi. So, ang ginawa na lang ni Najimi, okay, nag-isip na lang siya ng ibang parlor game na suitable kay Komi. At, hindi maintindihan yung rules eh. Ang dami! <laughs> so, okay. Ang, ang, uh, ang episode ay dapat yan ito. Sinamalay sa lang ni Najimi. Whoever, uh, something to this effect. Whoever shows their kissy face to Komi uh, and Komi likes it, wins the game. Parang ganun lang eh. Parang ganun lang yung yung gist ng parlor game eh. So, pakita ng kissy face lahat. <laughs> so, it was now Tadano's turn. Sa nahuli. Pinakita niya and para parang na-bore lahat. <laughs> Doon na tumigil yung parlor game. So, final scene. Okay? The final scene of the episode itself. Um, tinanong siya ni... Tinanong ni Komi si Tadano, Are you okay? Kasi siyempre sinusulat na. Pinakita. And well, Tadano said, Yeah, I'm fine. But I feel like there's a hole in my stomach. <laughs> Kasi parang nilet down niya si Komi eh. And sinabi naman ni Komi through... Of course, through writing. I had fun. Something to that effect. So, we're getting there. <laughs> so, let's break this episode down ARD style. Okay. Pace. Yung slowness ng pace ng episode na to, hindi, hindi siya boring because it has a, um, tawag dito, it has a comedic side to it. Aakalay mong apat na magkakaiwalay na storya? No. The pacing of this episode will make you understand that um, this is all part of Komi's uh, path to effectively communicating with anybody, not just Tadano. Kung binilisan lalo ng animators ang pacing ng episode na to, hindi natin ma-appreciate yung journey niya. And the, uh, the funny twist to it. <laughs> so, it's a slow but very comedic kind of pacing. Kaya, okay lang kasi, at saka, well, Owen is presenting four different stories here, technically. So, kung bibilisan mo ang pacing nito, wala, mawawala ng ganang manood ang, ano, ang, ang tao. Kaya, tama lang yung pacing. Hindi siya, uh, hindi siya sobrang bagal, hindi rin siya sobrang bilis tulad ng ginawa ng Way of the House Husband. And you have to emphasize, well, they did emphasize the comic favor to <laughs> Thanks to the pacing. Mila maririnay ko ito. Flow naman! What? I only saw two gear shifts here, overall. The first one was when Agari realized that something's wrong with Tommy. Kasi, yeah, more likely na over, na overheard niya. Yung uh, pag-uusap nila, Komi at ni Tadano. Although, Tadano, Tadano is the only one talking. Pero, alam, alam siguro ni Agari na ang kausap ni Tadano ay si Komi. Why did I call this a gear shift? Yun sila! Here's another person who now fully understands why Komi um, doesn't talk to people that much. Kung, kung baga si, parang si Tadano lang at saka si Najini. You now fully understand. But anyway, medyo gets na niya kung bakit. So, well, you know, first siya ni Tadano na, well, you wanna be, would you like to be friends with Komi? Inaccept naman niya. So, another addition to Komi's inner circuit. Kaya ako tinawag niya. Kaya ako rin tinawag na Gearship. So, the final Gearship here was when, um, was when she called Tadano and talked to him over the phone. Kahit hindi yun ang gusto niya talagang sabihin. It's obvious. It's not... Uh, it's not the one that she wants to say. Kasi inulit lang yun. Inulit lang yun sinasabi ng cellphone kung uh, busy, out of commentary. Inulit 
lang, ginaya lang eh. May mga sabi lang sa kay Tadano. Kasi, uh, Tadano called her. Tadano called her. Eh, kasi, uh, tinry lang yung tawa, tawagan si Tadano. Eh, pagsagot ni Tadano, the first time, uh, tinok niya. Hindi. Uh, yeah, in-end call niya agad. So, I'm very sure nagtaka si Tadano, kaya niya kinol back si Tommy. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simple lang. She, Komi is now starting to communicate. She, she's now learning to open her mouth. Although, uh, hindi pa niya, uh, wala pa siyang lakas ng loob na sabihin yung sa lobby niya. So, she, she had to imitate what the cell phone usually says when when, uh, when the other line is busy or out of the country. <laughs> it's a really funny scene, okay? But, it's a pivotal gear shift. Kasi, binubukan na ni Komi yung kanyang bibig. That's a start. Any start is better than no start at all. Tama ba ako mga kalahit tayo? So, these two gear shifts that I saw will play a role down the line in this anime. Kasi lumalaki na ang inner circle ni Komi means that she's got more people around her now to encourage her to communicate. And she can now, uh, she, she is now slowly getting enough courage to open her mouth. Let's see this Well, later on, I'm very sure that she can now speak her mind out. Yun ang susunod dyan. Kaya, yung character development na, ni, ng main protan, andun eh, it's on a roll na. Bloodline. Although, mag, although, technically, apat na magkakaibang story, no? but, hindi, yeah, malinis pa yun yung plot. Kasi yung transitioning from one story to the next, seamless eh. At saka talagang, um, there's, there's relevance involved eh. Especially yung uh, the second and third story, halatang, mag, halatang magkakabit sila eh. In the second story, Tommy uh, uses her cell phone for the first time by, siyempre, by uh, recording all her friends' cell phone numbers. First, you say John. Then, the third story, here's where we see Tommy actually talks to someone over the phone. Although, <laughs> kanina ko pa sinasabi, although hindi yun ang gusto niya sabihin, at least, she was able to talk over the phone. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. Yung pagkaka-transition ng mga stories. Okay. You can, well, if you're new to watching anime, you can easily um, deduce that this is just one episode. This is just one story. Pwede. Kasi, maganda yung transitioning between stories. Kaya malilis pa rin ang plot. Hindi mo masasabi yung plansado eh. Kasi, and well, there's no, no side story, there's no back story. At yung, yung transitioning, hindi naman magasmang eh. It's not, uh, there were no rough transitions between stories. Talagang, uh, each story had a smooth transition to the other. Kaya malilis ang plot. So, stay slow and plot. We all came together for this episode. Four different stories coming together to, to form one solid episode. Wow. All and does it again. <laughs> so, Homie Can Communicate Episode 3. Thumbs up. Animation students are slowly getting into that uh, trend of... Uh, of putting out multiple story episodes. Kasi eh, mukhang nag-guess na nila kung paano i-transition from one story to the next. Okay, the best examples are the ones in the process. All we can communicate and the vampire dies in no time. So, um, they have somewhat improved on the format itself that works, um, 
adopted during season 2. During during its second season. Dito kasi, uh, kasi sa season 2 ng Cells at Work, they, they had 2, even 3 stories per episode. Kasi mukhang, aminin mo natin o hindi, in-express ang season 2. They condensed it to just 8 episodes. Eh, kung tutusin mo, pwede yung 12, 12, 13, or even 14 episodes. But, uh, I think they had to give this to the spin off. So, the work is black. Okay, I'm not gonna put it up. And then, um, sabay sila, sabay sila halos ng air. So, in order for, uh, so black to, to be more closer, pinapos ng JV Productions yung, uh, season 2 ng bracket. Pero, the, uh, the story format they adapted there, yeah, a really good one. And, in-improve naman ng dalawang anime na nasa boss na ngayon. Vampire Night in No Time and Comic Gen 8. Kaya, lessons learned, yes. Yeah. And it's evident right here in this episode. So again, Comic Gen Communicate Episode 3. Three thumbs up. What do we do next, mga ka-lifestyle? You know the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. But yeah, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this time. So, picked up where we left off. Nakipag-deal pala si Joe kay, um sa mga ex-laws, particularly sa leader, sa leader nila, si Jean, to uh, come right away to where to where Team Loren is. We all know uh, what happened to Ren. So, just in the time of Nick, ayun, nakialam na si Yo, he takes out Piotis team with one, with one fell swoop. Uh, ang pinuntirya lang niya, yung, yung mga oversold nila. So, disabled, and uh, when Piotis team got up to well to to get some more, in comes Ryunosuke and Faust. Nung nakita sila ng mataba, Bob, sumuko agad. <laughs> sumuko agad. And uh, Bob, basically si kahit si Nikrom, umatras na rin. So Bob. Sinabi na ni Yo ang kanyang plano sa sa Team Varen. Humingi siya ng tulong of course kay Jean para para i-revive si si uh, si Ren. Binigyan ni Faust ang initial checkup, well, initial assessment from uh, from 3 to 5 feet away. Yeah, he's that good a doctor. But physically he can't do anything right now to Ren. Uh, physically dead na raw si Ren. Uh, which is true. Pero, um, nagkasumbatan, nagkasisihan, and in the end, Yo said, Don't lose your cool. As long as his soul is still inside there, there's still a chance for Ren. Kaya, kanya niya siguro, um, hininga ng tulong ang ex-loss. So, uh, while this was going on, of course, rushing to the scene na, sila Jean, Lizard, Marco, at si Manta. Kasi si Manta ang pinadala niya. And, uh, what a God, nagkakwentuhan. And, nakikwento ni Jean yung terms sila na ibibigay ni Manta kay Yo. Simple lang, simple lang ang terms sila. Now that they know that Yo is house twin brother, uh, they cannot afford to have, uh, have him in the summon fight. So, if they help Ren out or successful, Yo needs to withdraw from the summon fight. So, medyo na shock si Manta. So, final scene. Well, dumating, na, dumating na rin ang sila Marco doon. And, uh, well, si, si Marco na mismo nagsabi ng turns, turns ni Jean sa kanya. We cannot afford to have you still in the summon fight. Kapag tinulungan siya ng 
ng leader namin, mag-withdraw ka na sa Saman Fight. I'm sorry, Ana. Yan, you, you, you've seen the episode. Uh, parang binitawan na niya yung ano niya. Yung, yung gano'n niya rito, yung for Yoko meter. Parang gano'n niya. All, all participants in the Salmon Fight have that. So, sinurender na niya yung kanya. I don't know why that was even tougher for us. But anyway, let's break this episode down ARD style. Face. Why do I get that feeling that this is already the the third or fourth episode that I've seen a slow but excruciating pace? Because <laughs> carried over from the previous episode, which that episode alone was tough to watch. Because talaga mo, that's a big ita na kamatayan si Ren, and even up to this episode. So the pacing uh, of this episode, talaga it made made me realize that. It put me up to speed as to what is going on or what is at stake. Pero uh, sinabi ni Walt kasi umi- umiiyak na sa awa si ano si si Bason, the spirit ally ni Ren. Uh, Walt, he is uh, he was continuously apologizing to you for for not doing enough to protect Ren. Pero sabi mo niyo, what's your fault? Pali na din. Kapag na kapag nagamot ang amo mo, isang 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 tutu disipek. I'm just saying it in Filipino. Paano yun? Eh? Kapag nagising uli yung kapag na nagising uli yung amo mo, he may be even stronger than me. Pwede ring mangyare because John explained it really well during that uh, during that conversation scene. If you uh, if you've seen it, uh, if you if you've seen the episode already, kasi Mukhang nag-gets na ni Jean kung paano naging ganong kalakas si Hao. Because Hao has gone through a repeated process of dying and reincarnating for the past um, thousand years or so. It's a thousand year rinse and repeat process of dying and getting reborn. Dying, getting reborn. So, nagpatong, so kumbaga, what she's saying is nagpatong-patong na yung furyo ko niya. Hanggang sa umabot sa, sa 1.25 million on the, uh, on the meter that was, on the meter designed by the patch. So, Nabulan nila si Mother, ha? Talagang bumagsak yung pangana when, when John told him this. So, ang, yung ginagawa naman ni John is an, is a, um, unless, uh, a more humane and uh, well, uh, to her, it's a more practical method. If she subjects herself to uh, near-death experiences constantly, kanya pata patata siya lalo ang kuryo ko niya, which she always does on a daily basis through the Iron Maiden. Kaya halos araw-araw na dusya sa loob ng 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 punyetang torture torture device na yun. even in pictures a uh, a real iron maiden looks scary at talaga may tusutuso siya sa loob you do not want to to be caught up inside that malamang katapusan mo <laughs> but for a little girl like her to be to subject herself to this kind of a torture on a daily basis talagang talaga mamamatay ka rito eh pag hindi ka nilabas ka agad eh. so yeah, it's a more practical method, so you don't get to you don't, you don't have to rinse and repeat the dying and getting reborn sequence. No, <laughs> only uh, yeah, probably only how can do that. So, ito yung solu- ito yung alternative solution niya, yung Iron Maiden. So now, get the rin ni Manta kung bakit ganong kalakas na yon si How. And if they're able to apply that. Uh, apply that same theory to Ren Malamang, sigurado tataas din ng for Yoko nito pag, pag nabuhay siya uli That's what the pacing will make you realize How is it? Wow, pretty sick in the head, no? Bina mo um, Pamamatay siya, then he gets reborn Pamamatay siya, then he gets reborn 
Takina rinse and repeat process of just to just to up this <laughs> That is fucking disturbing. Excellent on facing an episode at all. Although talagang it was uh, it was a slow and excruciating as the previous one. Meron na sa alangani ng buhay. So talagang natural. Even in uh, even in real life, when when someone is dying, everyone has to pick up the pace just to save that to save that person. So na man. Well, first you should hear what when Yo finally interferes. So, what? Nagtapi ni Chrome. Kung paano nalaman ni Yo kung nasan sila. Hindi, well, hindi na nga na i... Hindi na nga nasabi ni Yo eh. Na nahulaan na kagad ni, ni Chrome. On who tipped them off. Si Silva. So, <laughs> why did I call this a gear ship? Simple lang. Yo is... Well, after... After the original series and 20, 27 and 28 episodes of this, I can safely say that Yo is a people person. Kagawin niya lahat uh, para lamang sa kaibigan niya. Uh, well, Ren is no different kasi nasabingin naman kamatayan eh. So, he has to do something. He has to act. Even if it means withdrawing from the summon fight. That's what this gear ship will make you realize. Now, uh, second gear ship was the conversation scene uh, yeah, between Manta and the three X Lords. Yung nung sinabi ni John na yung, yung terms nila kung para uh, matulungan nila si Ren. Why did I call this a gear ship? Well, it's obvious. Whether Yo accepts their terms or not, it will still be pivotal in this reboot. But eventually, we know what uh, we we now know what uh, what Yo's decision was. They have pivotal on gear shift. So, final gear shift was when well, um, sadly, Horo Horo uh, got disillusioned by every by everything that has happened. Uh, Dito. So he chose to well, he chose to leave Yo's inner circle. So bilang uh, bilang pakikisama, sumama sa kanya si Chocolat. Well, why did I call this a gear ship? Horo Horo didn't totally didn't exactly agree with Yo's idea of uh, asking the ex loss for help. Kasi well. We all know, uh, well, it's obvious. Horo Horo does not trust the X-Loss. And he still sees Lizard as a traitor to their inner circle. Kumaga, ini sa tingin niya kasi iniwan ni Lizard sa Eri si Yo eh, and just joined the X-Loss. Pero, Yo doesn't see it that way. Walang masamang ginapay talaga sa kanya. Okay, that's why you're so tired. It's a, uh, this way, Annie. It's a pivotal gear shift because, well, Bottom line, Yo has just lost two allies because of this decision to, uh, to ask the ex, to ask the ex law for help. Sinabihan din siya ni Marco that uh, the future shaman king should not be uh, should not be should not be this soft. Pero pinuri rin siya for making the right decision. Kasi eh, mo ano mo na guess na nila kung ano magiging decision ni Yo dito. Kasi he will, he will he really wants to. Uh, oh, he, really, he really wants to save Ren. So even if it means him withdrawing from the shaman fight, but I, at least ito lang on terms ng ex loss. At least ito lang. They don't want him in the shaman in the shaman fight anymore. Kasi to na. Maga, uh, it'll be too one sided already. Because eventually, if Yo stays in the shaman fight. It will eventually be Kim versus How. The first na ng explosion. Kaya niya, kaya nila pina we withdraw si Yo. In exchange for uh, helping Ren get back on his get back on his feet. Yeah, Yo is willing to do to make such a sacrifice. Kasi 
tinuturing naman niya, tinuturing naman niya kaibigan si Rene. No matter no matter how arrogant this kid is, no matter how much of an asshole this kid is. Pero uh, natuwa naman si Jo that the old Ren, well, uh, the Ren he first knew is long gone. Kasi, uh, the homicidal maniac Ren is totally gone. Kasi talagang malaki na yung pinagbago ni Ren ever since uh, ever since he became close to Jo and the rest of the universe. Alam mo, Kung talaga, wala na si Horo Horo sa inner circle ni Yo. Eh di nila sila mag-aaway ni Rain. I really enjoyed their um their uh their quarrel their quarrels against their um their verbal their verbal tussles against one another. Ang sarap pa noon. Even in the original series, talaga lang trip. Yo, pasa 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 pa nag pasa pa nagbangayan si si Rena si Horo Horo. Matatawa ka. Eh. Matatawa ka talaga. Eh. Ah, I think I'm gonna miss that. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, um the second one will play a role down the line in this anime. Well, we all know what happened in the final scene of this episode. Talagang it looks that way. Yo has withdrawn from the summon fight. Okay. Yung Puryo Ometer niya uh, looks like proverbially, proverbially surrendered it. Sa mga nun, wala na siya. It's out of it. Pero, proverbial pa lang eh. Hindi pa yung mismong act of surrendering eh. That's what this episode is making us believe. Plot lies! Or an episode as crucial as this? Requirement bang side story or back story dito? Nah. You should make the audience stick to the main continuity of the episode. This episode did that. The plot of this episode did that. Kasi ganun ka lini dito. Nasabihin na kama tayo ng isang, ang isang lead character ng anime. So, yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta make the audience focus on that. Para to, to keep their eyes glued in this, on this episode. Talagang, ano ba, mama, pati na ba talaga si Ren? Or pwede pa ba, pwede pa ba siya maisalba? That's, those are the types of questions you as the audience would, uh, would be thinking. If the plot weren't this clean, you you won't be thinking those kinds of questions. That's simple. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. And well, I hope Ren lives. <laughs> At saka, personally, it would be a, it would be a shame if you withdraw from the tournament. At all. That is you. That's what separate. That what makes him an ideal shaman king compassion how he doesn't give a shit even, even for the lives of his own followers Here's he cares about his friends he's the new shaman king so shaman king 2021 episode 28 yeah, no <laughs> So what happens now to Yo? If if his withdrawal is now confirmed, hmm. Um. Yane. How does win the shaman fight? And he becomes the shaman king. Does that mean na? wala nang pwedeng humamon sa kanya para sa pwesto niya after that siguro naman pwede outright challenge ang tawag doon so if Yo actually withdraws from the shaman fight and if how becomes the shaman king 
He could probably issue an open. He could probably issue a challenge to him. So how? For uh, for his throne. Sana nga meron ganon because now gives you a chance to become the shaman. Sam, kung tignan niyo, bali wala tong shaman fight na to. How will eventually win the shaman fight? Sino bang makakatapat, makakapagtapat sa kanya? Si Jean? No. She's not into that stage yet. And uh, she she doesn't agree with house methods of upping of upping for Yoko. As she stated in that conversation, that conversation scene. Talagang si Yo lang talaga ang makakatalo kay Hao. Because Kumaga I was supposed to be born as one person. You don't be like that. Eh, that's not all. The big comeback. So, this is the hate of the family. So, the mean how and the look. If that's the case, Yo has a pretty good chance of beating how. of house powers to uh, oh, yeah. everybody. He has really only one kid uh, uh, mission power. So, in effect, hindi ganong kalakas in house. Because half of his total power na kay Yo. Siguro, it was, uh, it was a, it was a, it's a clear twist of fate that he was born as twins. Pero, yung essence mismo ni Hao, nandun sa isa. At, yung, the remainder of his power is to go. Ano na lang yung isa. So, when brothers win, they fight with the Jets to become the Shaman Fight. Shaman Fight or no Shaman Fight. As expected, things business has picked up ever since that episode. scene of last episode. His name is Revel. Siya pala ang angel ni Saki. Yung uh, love interest ni Mirai. Sinabi na, sinabi na kagad ni Nase nung nakita sila ni Revel. Saki doesn't need to throw a red arrow at him. Talagang may pilis na siya kay, na, kay, kay Saki. So, nakabistuhan. Revel will do everything he can to protect Saki. Unang-una, Walang wings si Saki. Kasi uh, first rank angel lang si si Revel. And she doesn't shoot white arrows. So, kaya nga. Only special rank angels can can grant white arrows eh. Katulad ni Nase, kay Mirai. Si Najes ni Revel na uh, that uh, all four of them should work together. Kasi, ang pinaka-threat sa kanilang lahat ngayon ay si Metropoliman whose angel's name, revealed in this episode, is named Mesa. Metropoliman, while uh, while this was going on, hatched a plan to to gather all the god candidates together. So, nagpalabas siya ng video announcing that he will meet all of them in this baseball stadium. 
So, uh, napanood naman napanood, napanood naman nila Mirai, Saki, Nase at ni Revel to. So, nag-usap-usap sila. Sabi ni Revel, obviously, it's a trap. Agree si Mirai. Now, ayaw siyang uh, papuntain doon ni Saki. Well, Saki has good reason. Kasi, nakita na rin niya na na-trap ito. Pero, later on, in-explain ni Mirai na We know it's a trap, but uh, I have to learn something. Nagtibahan naman sa kanya agad si Revel. Pumunta sila Mirai at Saki lang sa, sa stadium. Hindi kasama yung mga angels nila. Kasi ma- makakalata. Yan ang mga ibang God candidates. Excuse me. On the day of the uh, of the meet-up, nandun na sila lahat. Even well, Mirai and Saki are there. Like, ano sila nang inactivate nila yung parang lifeline nilang dalawa which was um, created uh, which Revel have created para na-safeguard yung na-safeguard si Saki basically kasi she doesn't have any wings she has no means of escape pero si Mayrai meron so final scene merong lumitaw na dalawa pang metropolin men and they took in the Metropolitan himself. So, nakalataan nila Mirai at Saki na God candidate din itong dalawang to. Wow. Things are getting complicated. But, let's break this episode down ARD style. Base. First turn of the episode, medyo tense. Because, we really don't know what Rebels' true intentions were until kumunting si Nase kasi na na feel ni Nase na ano eh nawawala si Mirai so yeah of course hinahanap niya she she tracked Mirai down ayun nakita niya sa sa bahay ni Saki and, and syempre nakita yung dalawa sabi ni Nase that's why you're not a special man because you're into trickery <laughs> so does ano something to that effect kasi kaya nga special rank si Nase uh, marunod siya mag-empathize with people kaya yun ang naging, yun ang naging reason kung bakit siya naging special rank si, ang hino na kasi kay Rebel is manipulative <laughs> o sige sabi ni Rebel alright, I apologize for uh, for manipulating my own god candidate to over my interest All I wanted is to, all I wanted is to just protect Saki. Well, he's got good intentions. He, he is a real angel. Pero, isang, may common ground yung dalawang angel. Metropoliman is the real threat here. At isa pa, hindi nila alam kung sino ang angel nito. That, that's a, that's a problem. That, that is a big problem. This is what the patient will make you realize. The first turn of the episode, medyo tense. Pero, nung nagka, uh, nagka, nagkaliwanagan na, it, uh, it died down a bit, then, it went up nung nilabas ni Metropolitan Man yung kanyang video. Well, he's slowly becoming the main villain here. Kasi, in-explain na nga ni, ano yun, in-explain na nga ng mabuti ni Revel. God should bring happiness to everyone. Not not like this. He, he's got a point. If there's anybody to become, if there's anyone who should become the new God, it should be a tolerant and happy one. That's what, that's what he's trying to depart through the peace in this episode. Talagang hindi dapat, uh, hindi dapat maging Diyos, ito si Metropoliman. Because, he will throw the world into chaos, obviously. Kaya, um, the pacing will make you understand this. Kaya, sa middle, middle third ng episode, talagang ipinaintindi sa atin ang signal MD on, on where everybody stands, especially si Revel. He just wants to protect his God candidate. So, Flo naman, 
first gear shift here I saw was um uh well sort of a very romantic gear shift because tinamaan na si tinamisa na si Mirai ng Red Arrow ni Saki eh hindi pa hindi pa alam ni, ni Rebel na talagang may feeling na itong si Mirai kay Saki eh kumbaga may nagnify lang <laughs> so Mirai got to uh, got to have some alone time with Saki ayun nasabi niya yung feelings niya pero ang after 30 after 33 days Uh, yun pa rin ang feelings niya Sabi ni Nasen I told you I told you he, I told you his feelings for Saki were genuine So Well Simple lang kung bakit ko tinawag na gearship ko Kasi According to us Filipinos Mapaglaro ang sadhana Fate is playful Well Here's an example <laughs> You know mo naman Okay Here you are in Mirai's shoes. You just found out that your that your love interest is also a god candidate. Pero hindi siya kasi lakas mo. She only has red arrows. Wala siyang wings. So, basically she can't defend herself. Or she can't even escape. Wala siyang means of escape kasi unlike Mirai, who has Uh, who is the total package right now when it comes to God candidates? He can do any, he can do practically anything, even escape. Kasi malawak yung pakpak niya. This is a pivotal gear shift. Kasi I feel that lala ng motivated na ma, na na karerin ni Mirai ito ang pagiging God candidate. He's now slowly uh, getting that sense of justice dahil Merong bantang ganito tulad ni Metropolitan. Kapwa niya God Candidate who was also a total package technically kasi special grado, a special right angel is behind him. This is Handler. So, this Metropolitan can threaten Saki. Kung ang talagang goal ng mohong na to ay patayin yung Uh, yung 11 other God Candidates Abay, siya magkabot sa akin So, yeah Mirai can now take it upon himself to 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 end this guy Asa lang uh, Asa maging maligaya lang sa akin He will He will do anything That's what this gear shift will make you realize Final gear shift Was when Metropolitan announced through that video na he wants to meet up with all the other God candidates that he considers his enemies once and now, strangely enough, he sees them as uh, brothers and sisters kasi kindred, meron doon silang kindred spirit. If you would only see uh, what Metropolitan, Metropolitan is behind the scenes, Sabi mo na, pangin na mo, eh, pali ka lang, eh, gusto mo lang patahin na ang dyan. Pari kong magiging Diyos ngayon. So, well, honestly, oh, Rebel instantly saw, saw through his visite. Uh, uh, just by watching the video, alam na ni Rebel, eh, na, na nagkagaguhin ang cell nito, eh. After all, he is the angel of trickery. He was thinking too about, uh, playing tricks on someone. Kaya Agree na po Agree na po si Mirai Why did I call this a gear shift? Well Simply lang Metropolitan will do Everything he can To Eliminate the other God candidates Para wala siya Kompetensya Para automatically Siya ang magiging God <laughs> You do not want A man as evil as this To become God Wala Wala Wala, wala siyang sasantuhin So y- Yun ang uh, Yun ang rationale Ni Revel You do We do not want This guy To become God Patay tayong lahat Human or angel man Yay He's got a point 
And Mirai also agrees. And eventually, si Nase and then si Saki. Na talagang, we gotta do something about this guy. That's what is crazy for me, Mirai. Kaya, pivotal piercing ito. Because, will this plan work? I don't think so. Kasi, hindi sinala nila Mirai at Saki ang kanila mga angel. Talagang, they went undercover for this. Di ba, alam natin yung mga Metropolitan Man na meron na meron dalawang God candidates sa audience. Di ba, nila nila sila sila na asin rebel. Uh, Nagtiwala lang yung dalawang angel sa kanila. Kaya, so these wishes that I saw, definitely, will play a role down the line for Angie. They will both both churches will have an impact on this action. Totally unnecessary to cinch in a, a, a side story or a backstory with this kind of an episode. Dahil, you are you really want to impart to the audience how much of a villain Metropolitan is. Kung gano siya uh, kadibius na character. He could not be trusted and whatever pasad he is showing to others, you gotta deep dive into this guy para makita mo yung tunay niyang katakuan. And uh, you see Miss Angel, si si Misa, Ano ba eh? Grabe. Medyo nakakatakot ang itsura ng angel na to. <laughs> Dahil pati yung leg, yung niigat mo ka niya, may pakpak. Nakatakit na lang sa akin yung ganun. Parang, parang nagsisilpin yung headgear niya. Wow. If you're an angel and you can have six wings, parang parang yun ang bilhin ako eh. Oh, <laughs> 
Medyo nag-tone down na si Revel. And, what? Wow, hindi na ba'y kanapos si Revel? Good guys, kasi eh. With his, um, knowledge and experience of trickery, he can even see through the Revel Man's But anyway, <laughs> what do we do now, mga lifestyle? Simple la. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Panapa na bilin. Papasabag na mga bilin natin. So, while you're, while you're waiting for that, enjoy the other reviews in this diet. Nakapasok na sila sa Mount Musubi, pero humiwalay ang kambal kay Moroha. Why? Let's just say that! Um, the barrier itself is playing with them while Setsuna and uh, Toa's minds are being played by the barrier. Moroha was able to get to the get to the heart of the mountain. At nakilala niya si Rion ang anak ni Kirin Maru. Sinabi sa kanya ni Rion na, well, uh, ito ba yung, ito ba yung sinasabi mo mga kaibigan mo? Moro said, yes. Well, if you want to save them, you have to do as I say. So, yun nga. Oh. Pumasok ka sa portal na yan. Yan. Masasabaw mo na sila. Whether it was Moro's choice or not, she got dragged into that hole. While she was, um, uh, while she was about to save the two, Meron siya nadaan na parang floating island. Nakita niya mga magulang niya. Inuyasha at si Kagome. So, nagtaka siya ko ba? Teka, anong ginagawa ng nanay at tatay ko rito? So, what? What? She didn't have time to ponder on, on, uh, on that. Kasi, the next, the next location she bumped into was the modern era. Kung saan nandoon, si Towa. Po, bagsak siya. Sabi niya kay Towa, don't believe everything you see here. It's all an illusion. I'll show you. So, she uses one of her sacred arrows. Pinatama niya yung uh, yung yung three of ages sa modern era. Biglang nag-iba lugar. Then, they get both thrown to where Setsuna was. Sa spirito mismo ng three of ages yung kung saan eh doon nakakulong ang nani, nani nila ni Toa si Rin all three of them saw Rin so well tinanong ng spirito ng three of ages kay Setsuna ano bang gusto mong gawin sa nanay mo I want to save her so that's it because um before Setsuna and Toa got separated from uh, uh, before they before they got there tinanong sila ng parang isang boses na katulad ni Kirin Maru kaboses ano ba ang gusto mong bitawan pero anong gusto mo talagang ano mahalaga sa'yo so what is the thing most valuable to you and what are you what is the thing you're most willing to give up he's heard the answers okay yeah 
Paso na kayo sa bundok. And please protect my daughter. So, confirm. This is Kirin Maru's daughter, si Rion. Rion, as a reward, gave them the Kyuyokon route. They got what they came for. What is next? Mamiya natin i-deep dive. But for now, let's break that episode down ARD style. Pace. It has that slow but excruciating pacing. When I say slow but excruciating, yung... Um, the trial these three went through, mararamdaman mo. Kasi parang ang hirap-hirap gawin. That's what I meant by slow but excruciating pacing. Because it's what the pacing, it's the pacing's job to make you, to elicit such emotions from you. So, well, that elicited an emotion from me, a slow but excruciating one. Sabi ko, when I was, uh, when I was, watching um Toa just um wandering in this um parang naging empty modern era Ooh, Toa missing ka hindi yan ang totoo modern era you know dilinin lang nang kayo ng ano ng barrier yeah. as a result you would you would, uh, you would actually root for the twins kasi hindi pa nila na hindi pa hindi pa lang nila nalalaman kung anong kung ano nangyayari Pero si Moro ha alam na alam na because she was the she was the only one that um uh, that the barrier did not uh, get to be played with. Dahil meron din siya, aside from having demon energy, she also has spirit energy. Dahil kay Kagome nanay niya. Kasi ang quarter demon siya. Her father is of course Inuyasha, a half demon. Ang nanay niyang si Kagome, pure human. Pero meron siyang meron meron siyang natatanging spirit energy kaya siya naging ano ah uh, mga priestess. Kaya siya nag kaya siya nag qualify kaya siya nag qualify sa pagiging priestess because she has this powerful spirit energy. Kaya Moroha has the best of both worlds. Kaya hindi siya naapektuhan ng barrier. Swerte ni Moroha. <laughs> That's all I could say about the pacing. No complaint. This episode is a um, what I can call a trial by fire episode. Because um, sirubukan yung tatlo eh, para before they could actually enter the uh, the heart of the mountain. Kaya sa ganit sa ganito klaseng episode ganito dapat ang pacing. It would really make you um, feel what the uh, what the lead characters are going through and you would automatically root for them because of the um, the emotions it tri- the pacing triggered from you flow naman first gear shift was when ayun na the barrier started playing with the twins maga since uh, hindi 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 mapakilaman ng barrier si Moroha because of her her spirit energy ang ginalaw na lang niya yung kambal si Towa si Tetsuna because they don't have spirit energy themselves talagang talagang demon energy yung nasa kanila so sila ang pinuntirya talaga ng barrier why did I call this a gear shift? syempre it actually triggered the episode you think the opening scene triggered the episode? nope <laughs> that particular gear shift triggered the episode because here they are um, fo- moving to an entity that they are worthy in entering this mountain so which, which, in which they eventually won kaya nakuha nila ngayon ang Kiryokon do Kiryon if it weren't for this gear shift we wouldn't have uh, character development moments like uh, like the like the scene we saw here where in all three of them are in front of the spirit of the of the king of Egypt. Second gear shift was when Moroha saw her parents. Sa ikaw nila the gear shift. What? The spark yung pananabit ng ng bata sa kanya mga magulang because um she remember she was still an infant 
when she said in case her parents in that um in that rainbow pearl yung yung rainbow pearl na dinukot ni ni si Shumaro kay Inuyasha noon during the um uh, it has been shown several times already in this series alone kasi yun yung yun yung nag uh one of the events that triggered Yasa Hime you can see that uh, despite her despite her outgoing nature Moroha misses her parents of course being the daughter of the great Inuyasha <laughs> but hey the this is that she, she she feels that pressure of uh of really uh delivering the goods performing well because uh well Inuyasha is uh not only is he uh, a half demon he is also a fierce demon hunter yeah well he's proven that in the in the four seasons in in, in his own show <laughs> ilang ilang demon na ba pinatumba niya <laughs> countless uh, countless many. So that particular gear shift is also served as a fan service moment. Because we Inuyasha fans really want to see Inuyasha and Kagomi again. So, boom, here we are. <laughs> Moro has parents. Kunti kasi na magkariyunyon. But but Moro had something important to do. Kaya hindi niya muna iisip yun. But the fan service moment is there. Kaya ako nilaw na gear shift. Final gear shift. Was um what well, everybody realized what the what they want what they want the most and what they're willing to let go of to get it. That was the time yung the salita yung bosses ni Kirin Maru that he heard the answers already. He is satisfied. Sige, ilabayan na yung pumatok sa ng bundok ng takbo. Sabay sabay. I see that as a character development gear shift. Why? Because it just affirms the goals. Lalo na kitoa. She just wa- she just wants to protect her sister. She said so na she wants to free her mother. Of course, nani nila ni kitoa. Moro ha? She wants to protect her friends. Well, they're not the twins. They're not just friends to her. She's, they're family. mga pinsan buod yata ko. Just goes to show you that their uh, their goal of killing Kirin Maru is now more urgent than ever. Dahil because of this trial, nakuha nila ang Kyoyokon Root. Ibigay sa kanila ni Leon. As a reward also for cleaning her. Kasi what, ang nagpulong sa kanya doon, walang iba kung yung tatay nila si Kirin Maru. So, siguro sinabi lang ng boses ni Kirin Maru na protect my daughter at all costs. You know, if you deep dive into that, Kirin Maru also has uh, a form in the modern era. Si Mr. Kirin, yung class advisor dati ni Towa, that's also Kirin Maru. Kumbaga, um, he acts like Riku, pero nasa ibang timeline. You, you know how Riku works kasi we've all seen um, that backstory sequence in this episode where talagang yung naputo niya sungit talagang ibinaliban yun ibinaliban ni Kirin Maru sa sahig eventually nang buong ganon naging tao ayun si Riku na so why right there and then not naging utosan na sa ni Zero ang ni Zero sa kanya oh tapo mo itong braso ng kapatid ko Eh, pinatulong niya ng Riku kung saan ba niya pa hindi makapunto. He actually threw that severed arm into the, uh, uh, into that well wherein naglalabas-masag dati si Kagome doon. That's the same well. I forgot. The Bone Eater's Well. Yun. Bone Eater's Well. Doon yung binagsak. You know, come to think of it, siguro, the severed arm became Mr. Kirin. Possible. Because it's still a part of Kirin Maru's body. Eh, yung sungay nga eh. Naging Riku. Ito pa kayong braso na, naputo, na pinuto ng Great Dog Demon. <laughs> it's possible. Talaga, hindi dahil nyo na maigi. How did Mr. Kirin exist in that world? 
Alalahan niyo during episode 23 of season 1. Very familiar si Mr. Kirin sa parang papasok na comment na ganun. You can tell that it, that that was Kirin Maru. Si Mr. Kirin. Kirin ang last name eh. Pakalata na kayo. This is Kirin Maru. Pero, based on what we just saw in that backstory sequence, and yung, well, the actual final scene, we're in Mr. Kirin held the um the modern uh, the modern era tree of ages. Tinatulo niya kung ano man nangyayari. Am I now an anomaly in this world? Naalala ko ngayon tuloy yung final scene. Okay. You would think of it this way. Ganito yan. So, itinapo ni Riku yung naputon na braso ni Kirin Maru doon sa Bone Eaters. Well, and there's this guy named Mr. Kirin in the modern era who also happens to be Toa's former class advisor. Na ngayon, nagta- na, na, he knows that that tree na nakabaro sa talisman is the tree of AJ. He knows what it, is, what it can do. So, we can now safely conclude that Mr. Kirin is Kirin Maru's extension tulad ni Riku. But I don't think... Uh, Kirin Maru can spy on the modern era kasi masyado ng malayo pero since him and Rico are in the same era he can do that conclusion there is a limit to Kirin Maru's power kaya hmm nag-deep natin ang maigay yung final scene at ikinunik natin dun sa the backstory sequence to Kirin Maru right after the great dog demon gave him his most humiliating defeat sabay binuwa ba naman tutuol na na sungay pinutuol na ka pa ng braso <laughs> at he, the great dog demon actually left him for dead dahil but hindi siya, hindi siya tinulong yan dahil nanonood yung nanonood si Rion noon at the time so parang oh teka muna we stop here. Your child is watching. And what? Well, the great dog demon feels that he's won against Kirin Maru. Why force the issue? Why kill the father in front of his own daughter? Parang hindi na tama eh. So, the great dog demon made, a, made, a right, made the right call there. Kaya, kaya naging pinaka nakakayang pagkatalo ni Kirin Maru yun. He, has, he hasn't forgotten that loss. Uh, probably for eight, it was 600 years ago. So, for 600 years, hindi niya, hindi siya makamove on sa pagkatalo ng dun. Kaya, ganun lang katindi ang galit niya sa, sa bloodline ng Great Dog Demon. That's why, as much as possible, he wanted to kill, he wants to kill si Shumaru, he also wants to kill Inuyasha. Parang anak ng Great Dog Demon dun. Kaya, to, to be killed by, the, technically, the great dog demon's granddaughter would probably be his. his uh, it won't only be his most humiliating defeat ever. It might be his last. <laughs> so, these three viewships that I saw will play a role down the line in season two. Especially the last one. <laughs> so, plot line. Teka. Uh, there is a backstory sequence here. Planchado. Kung medyo rough kasi yung transition from uh, main continuity to backstory sequence then back to main continuity. I saw rough edges there. Hindi suabe yung pagkaka-transition into and out from the backstory sequence. That's rough. That backstory sequence is vital to the episode. Bakit? Kasi, we now know how how Rico was born and if you tie that to the final scene, 
we now know where Mr. Kirin came from. Kung bakit yung memory si Kirin Maru, meron siya. Mm. So, severed arm. Na tinapon ni Rico doon sa Bone Eater's Well. Kaya pala na ako na sa... So, uh, in essence, tapos na ng modern era yun. Natapon sa modern era. If the plan, the plot worked this iron out, hindi natin madibig dag na mabuti. So, but everything is still up in the air. Marami pang pwede mangyari. Because we're only four episodes in. Doro marami pang revelations ang, ang lalabas dito. Tandaan nyo, Yasahimi has just been announced as a 24, ane, Yasahimi Season 2 has been recently announced as a 24 episode run. So, oi, will be, well, no? I wasn't surprised at the announcement kasi ini-expect ko na talaga na 24 episodes na naman ito. Because that's how the Kiryasha franchise works. Hindi siya naglalabas ng, ng bagong run less than 24 episodes. Never. Never. Kaya, why should, why should, why should Yasa Hini, why should Yasa Hini be different? So going back to the plot of this episode. So, face, low, plot. I almost, uh, wasn't able to distinguish one from the other. Kita nyo? Kasi yung, uh, only during explaining the flow that I mentioned the final scene, doon ko lang talaga naalala Because, uh, the backstory sequence actually made me remember what the final scene was. Kasi doon pala nandiyos ko eh. Just for you mga ka-lifestyle. But, if you got another deep dive into that, hey, I'm willing to listen. There's the moment section. So, that's a hit in the second act, episode 4. <laughs> Here's another reason why I gave it the two thumbs up because yung battle yung laban nila Kirin Maruot ng Great Dog Demon that was a really satisfying sequence. Mira mo for a demon as arrogant as Kirin Maruot to be humiliated like this by the Great Dog by an an adversary he has met for the first time, right there and then. Eh, he hasn't. He, he, he hasn't na ka move on sa pagkatalum. <laughs> it, it kept him angry. It kept him evil for 600 years because of that loss. Pero well, pino tuna na kasi na sumai, pino tuna pa sa nakalai, anak ng braso. Wow. Kung Malamang, tinuloy na siya ng Great Dog Demon right there. Eh, hawak pa ng Great Dog Demon ng Tess Haiga nun eh. Yun ang ginag- If you would uh, see the, the weapon lead the Great Dog Demon has when he faced off with Kirin Maru, Tess Haiga yun eh. That's the Tess Haiga! Yun ang ginamit niya. It was a very satisfying sequence. Imagine if the girls can do the same thing. This same thing to Kirin Maru. That would be more satisfying. <laughs> I would love to see that. Ep I would love to... I, I am... Uh, I am dying to see that kind of a sequence. Kaya, binigyan ko ng two thumbs up ito. So again, Yasa Hime the second act, episode 4? sa tingin ko ha mukhang magiging kakampi ng tatlong ng tatlong bida itong sino yun eh. ah I got that thing okay. I got that thing so in the meantime enjoy the other reviews in this time
we start off with um with um uh, Shin uh receiving a report from obviously his uh his second in command now kasi lieutenant she several moments before he um puts his signature on that he <laughs> he sees Frederica half awake and half naked <laughs> So, nakita niya yung mga yung kasama, tinapit si Frederica doon. So, eh, sigurado, nagisi-nagisi na si Frederica because all of a sudden, she's she's several feet into the air being being thrown at someone. So, it was a really funny moment. But, uh, after that, of course, uh, some, well, uh, the 86 are all reunited again because of the... Um, Uh, because of the because of their superior yung babae kaya pala she wants uh, she wants all the 86 back in her unit dahil uh, siya pala ang magsispearhead ng ng uh, ng isang malaki ang strike force that will prepare for the impending legion all out attack kasi winarning na sila ng, sila before ni Shin that The Legion um, will be will be going all out sooner or later. So naganda na sila. And um dini brief niya yung commanding officer nila sila. And uh, Shin gave his insights on how um, the Regan leads yung parang juggernaut uh, parang um, federacy version ng juggernaut ng Republic. on how uh, on how it feels and how it operates eh sinabi lang niya they're like juggernauts <laughs> pero eh sinabi naman din niya na well they're more mobile they're they're highly maneuverable than the ones uh than the versions of the republic and uh pero nag pero nagkaroon ng complaint si Korena at si um, I forgot that I forgot that long-haired girl's name eh. um medyo dapat medyo lagyan ng konti pang comfort for for the pilot so well their, their commanding officer took that into consideration in her kasi siya mismo nag-design nito she also explained here on why and what motivated her to to design the Regan Leaps Like the like she and the other 86, she also started out at 15. Batang bata. And lahat ng mga naging kasabay niya noon, puro patay na ngayon. If they um This is this was the time when the legion first invaded. So ang ginagawa pa nila noon mga ano pa eh mga yung mga Jarmagander na super bagal. Kung meron meron man lumabas na mas mabilis na version ng ng machine na to, sigurado yung may banyang kasama buhay pa hanggang ngayon. And that was 10 years ago. So, this now motive niya, yeah, this now motivated her to design the Regan Lee. Kinuha lang niya yung sobrang human rights violating na na design ng Republic yung Juggernaut. Ito ang naging basis niya doon sa Reagan Lee. Now, based on Shin's opinion, mas uh, mas madaling imaan yung obra, ito. Itong version ng Federacy. Later on, Federica apologized for her actions uh, that morning. Kasi talagang uh, siguro force of habit and uh, well, she Something to this effect, she promised never to do it again. Tinanong siya ni Shin kung sino itong Kiri na binagat siya habang, habang, habang naglalakad siya pa ng pupunga, pupungas, pupungas, pupungas pa ng mata. Yung talagang bagong gising ang itsura. His name, according to Federica, was Kirian Nosen. Pero um, she assures Shin na hindi niya ka mag-anak to. Kasi si, si Shin, direct descendant ng talagang pamilyang Nusen. Ito, ano lang eh. Uh, Kung baga, familial branch, parang ganon. But, ito pa lang si Kirian Nusen. 
Ito ang nagsilbing bodyguard kay Federica nung siya ang, ang reyna ng John Empire. When the Legion first attacked, well, she actually issued the order to the Legion to invade their neighbors. Pero, the, citizen, the citizenry has had enough of her tyranny. So, nagribulusyon. Drove her family to, um, to, uh, to a hidden fortress. So, well, uh, they were eventually overthrown. Pero, habang nangyayari pa na ito, the Legion was slowly advancing to their location. Kumbaga, uh, out of nowhere, the Legion became autonomous. Suddenly thinking for its, for its own purposes. Ooh. Uh, this was the this was the scary part of her story. Pero it, it, it wasn't it wasn't a backstory sequence. No, talagang ginikwento niya. While this was all happening, um, Kiriya's um, what you call this job mainly was to protect her because she is uh, Shang Shang Reina. She was she was the uh, the Jiad Empire's last queen. Eh, nakita lahat ni Kiriya kung paano pumatay ang Legion. Well, it's probably Joven insane. He was eventually killed by the Legion. And, his brain was taken out. Final scene, uh, Shin and Raiden were contemplating on how, on how, um, what you call this? On how Major Milize was doing. Pero, Unbeknownst to them, she's no longer a major. Diba? She's a captain now. Din remote nga siya. Right after the finale. So, yun nga. Uh, the, the camera panned to... Uh, to Captain Milize. Ang nga yung sinusulat. And her... Her vision board of them nandun pa. So, talagang hindi niya ginagalaw. Very memorable sa kanya yung batch nila. Do we get to see... Uh, do, we, do we get to see... Uh, Bloody Regina again? Probably. Kasi, this past um, episodes 2, 3, and 4, doon pala natin siya nakita ulit. So, let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Tolerable yung slowness ng episode. Most especially, nung nagsimulang magkwento si Frederica. It became slow and excruciating. Kahit hindi siya tunay na backstory sequence, talagang uh, while you were uh, listening to Frederica's uh, story in this episode, talagang you, you ako when I when I was when I was listening to it, I wasn't blinking at all. Yung tipong inaanto ako no. It was. It was a really disturbing story for a ten-year-old child to to tell to tell such a story. That's disturbing in itself, and the pacing will make you feel that make you feel this way. I, I thought, wow, ten years old pa lang ang bata nito pero ang ang ikinikwento niya. Not even an adult can do this. She was telling the final days of the Jiad Empire practically in this backstory of hers. Yung talagang yung pagkakakwento niya. Well, uh, if you've seen the episode, parang no reaction si Shin. Eh? <laughs> parang, okay, sige. Tell me more. Parang gano'n lang eh. Sanay, sanay siya kasi makanig ng ganitong kwento eh. So, I got no complaints as to the pacing of this episode. Um, it was, but it was only when Frederica started telling her story, it it all made sense na. Bakit ganitong kabagal yung pacing? It built us up to the story. Kaya, no more complaints. Let's be clear on that. Flo naman! Well, I only saw two gear shifts here. First one was uh, well, was when the 86 reunited. I 
kasi pinabalik sila lahat ng talagang commanding option nila to prepare for uh, for Shin's prediction of an all-out attack by the Legion. Why did I call this a gear shift? No brainer, folks. Oh, the 86 are back together. Kaya uh, should we expect more hardcore action? 99%. <laughs> Hindi lang si Shin ang nandito na. Si Raiden, si Corena. Uh, uh, sino ba ba tong dalawa? I, uh, I actually forgot their names. But anyway, uh, si Tio yung isa. Tio. Tsaka si... Uh, I actually forgot that long-haired girl's name. Kasi, ito talaga yung core ng, uh, ng pinamuno ang group on Shin noon when they were still uh, when they were still with the Republic when they were still fighting for the Republic so ito talaga yung itong apat na to talagang ito talagang close kay Shin because these are actually the four that uh, that was under Shin's direct command that talagang hanggang ay buhay pa they managed to keep themselves alive if up to this point. Nakadalawang, nakadalawang sabak na sila sa gera. Pero buhay pa tong apat na to. So deep inside, Shin is relieved because he has his old team back. And together, they can, uh, well, they can stave off prejudices. Uh, Maltreatment, well, they, they've experienced that in season one. Kaya, it's great to see them back together again. Kaya, kaya ko tinang gear shift ko. Now, final gear shift was when, well, Frederica started telling her story. Bakit ko tinang gear shift yun? Finally, the last ruler of the Jihad Empire has spilled the beans as to what exactly happened during the final days of her empire and based on her tonality uh, she's she's totally uh, holding herself accountable for why the legion has gotten this strong kasi tala, para siyang para, parang asong ulo na pinakawalan mo eh parang ganun yung dating yan so yeah she, she is blaming herself for everything the Legion has done so far because she just well proverbially she let the dogs out and she couldn't uh, she couldn't call them off so it's an eye-opening gear shift dahil well from Shin's point of view this is valuable information now she knows on how to effectively deal with the Legion. Kasi ito yung mga kwento hindi kinikwento sa kanila ng Republic. All they're, all they're being told is to fight. Fight until they die. In a, in a humane military, you can't do that. But <laughs> the Republic are scum. And they treat the 86 as pigs. If you're the viewer, you are so glad that these five, eight, five former 86 are now out of the Republic's hands. Talagang mo, they lived the life of freedom and now they decided to go back to the battlefield. Trust me up! Sabi nga ni in episode 2, if they want to go back to the battlefield, just let them. Baga, well, can your old girl, respecting, respecting the choices of her... Uh, of her older brothers and sisters. Not even an adult can do that. I ako tinawag na gear shift to. So, these two gear shifts that I saw, they will play a role down the line in season 2. Especially yung pangalawa. Shin considers uh, Frederica's story as valuable information. Kaya, shut up si Shin eh. Talagang he, he was actually listening to Frederica's story. Alatamo. 
Pinopeya ng pang, binigyan pa kanya ng kape, sabi niya. Kanya siguro, okay, start talking. Here's some coffee. <laughs> I'll just be here listening. Patalino rin si Shinny. This, uh, the, the, the main male protag, uh, he's, a, he's a smart guy. He's a sponge. Sponge. That's what makes him a genius. Now, plot wise. Hmm. Bakit? Kasi, you cannot consider um, Frederica's story ten sequence to be a back story one. Kasi, silang dalawa lang naman ni Shin ang pinapakita dun eh. So, you can now consider that sequence a part of the main continuity of the episode. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. Hindi siya nag-veer away, hindi siya nag- uh, hindi siya nag-step out muna para ikwento ang isang isa na namang kwento. No! Kasi, the storytelling sequence is powerful enough to deliver the message. But at the same time, it keeps the viewer inside the main con- continuity of the episode. Kaya, I... Minsan hindi ako ano, minsan hindi ako namalikmata sa sequence na yun. It really kept me to the edge of my seat. So base, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Probably setting, probably um, setting us up for a break from the Federacy and uh, the way it transitioned to the final scene. Well, looks like we're going to see what uh. What Captain Millen, what Bloody Regina has been, has been doing lately after something. Uh, Bugot pa sa mga from episodes 2 to 4. So, 86 part 2, episode 4. Oh. <laughs> Fans are are so glad that 86 is back. And would you believe, mga ka lifestyle? Some anime fans couldn't believe that 86 already has a second season. Hello. In announce na pagkatapos ng season one finale na magkakaroon ng season two to. Did you get the memo? So for me, as a as a critic. I really got to prepare my roster as, uh, as far ahead as two seasons starting from spring. Uh, this spring lang pinalabas yung season 1 ito. Kung walang kapamagandang anime, I'll take season 2 one. But I really have to kasi ang ganda ng... Ang ganda kasi ng naging final 3 episodes ng season 1. First of all, I really want to know what, what's going to happen. Then, akala ko, that would be the final, that would be the series finale. Ilang in-announce. 86 will have a season 2. Paano? Naman lang si Shin, di ba? So, I didn't see this coming. That 86 will have a season 2. If you haven't seen 86 Part 2, I strongly suggest you start watching it now. Talaga. Pero, I'm warning you, if you haven't seen Season 1, don't watch it. Hindi mo maintindihan yung mga pangyayari dito sa first 4 episodes. So again, 86 Part 2, Episode 4. Captain Millicent's turn uh, 
Now the new side of this story. Like. Yeah. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest for a while. Ah, uh, napadaan ng mga ang ating mga lead characters si Teruto, si Sakura, and their new uh, the new member of the gang si Hiyori. Who has made it a point to tag along with her new master. <laughs> so they came came across this building na according to Sakura, marami raw challenger. So they're going to go in there and probably challenge every single one of them for for Tero to see. Pagpasok nila, down lahat. <laughs> Due to unexplained circumstances. So, well, uh, nagpatawag na ng ambulansya si Sakura, uh, si, yeah, si Sakura, while she was, um, scanning the, uh, what's this, the statuses of each of the fallen battlers. Mga, mga, mga card battlers. Pero may nakita siyang email. So, sinabi niya muna kay, uh, na, hindi, bigla siyang tumak muna to this location wherein she gets made up by this uh, by this hooded guy na kaalyado ng king. His name is Ishinome. So, ang subject pala na gustong i- i- ipasabong niya kay Teruto, si si Enjo no Mitsu. Right? Which, well, by pure coincidence, Teruto meets during this uh, this Uh, this uh, during this rally that he got accidentally mixed up with pero uh, sinal, pero isinalba siya so while uh Peroto was getting acquainted with uh with Enjo he actually invited him over to his uh, campsite <laughs> his place of residence so oh okay uh, they parted ways after well, getting some getting some acquainted getting acquainted then Teruto just got a uh, tip from Sakura that may, may kalaban na siya. Ang meeting place nila ito parang uh, ang lakak na garden eh, parang uh, garden balcony eh. Who meets up with him? Si Enjo. I don't know what kind of underhanded tactics uh, Sakura is employing just to just to promote uh, her uh, her ward. Pero it's It's starting to become effective. The car battle ensues. Back and forth na naman ang laban. Then, for uh, for three of his turns, Enjo was dominating the battle. Pero, um, uh, sad to say, Teroto was just playing with him. Eventually, Teroto beats him. Talagang, Mukhang sinadya talaga ni Teroto na ipaubos yung life niya. I think there is a um, there's a combo that he is uh, that he is dying to pull off in this uh, in this particular battle na I think kailangan niya ta maubos ang life niya. So he was able to um, activate Bloom's effect. Ayun. Tuloy-tuloy na yung pagkatalo ni Enjo. And well, he just said I like I got a long way to go. Eh, ang rebata naman sa kanya ni Tero to, you sure do. Final scene. We soon find ourselves in the king's lair. Well, the king is actually a little girl. So, napansin niya si Ishinomi na, well, uh, kumaga, uh, praising Tero to. Well, sinabi lang ng, ng king, if he is back, I am glad, and she is holding this. Wow, this this uh, this top toy that actually looks like Teroto. Talagang may bit hinihikitan niya pa niya lalo yung akap niya dun. Ooh, that, uh, find that a little disturbing. So we now know uh, what the king looks like. Let's break this down, ARD style. Pace, the pace only picked up nung nagsimula na yung battle, yung card battle. But, uh, all throughout, 
and probably in, in, in the final scene, dun, dun ko na nakitang pumake up yung pace. Because, number one, uh, it's a card game anime. Natural. Pag merong battle, may, merong card battle scene, the pace always picked up. And final scenes like the one we just saw. Well, I'm sure you've already seen the episode. Swap ang pacing ng episode. Kasi, uh, you really need some sort of a build-up towards the card battle scene. So, I think they're following the UBO format. Kasi ganitong ganito yung uh, yung storyline format ng uh, ng bawat UBO series. There's a build-up in the first at least the, the first third of the episode. Then, pag nagkamuna na, ayan, card battle na. So, as we go along, the pace, the pace is picking up until uh, sigurado na may, nana, may mananalo. So, I got no complaints with the pacing on this episode kasi sana'y ako manood ng mga card game anime. I am a Yu-Gi-Oh fan and player. Hmm? <laughs> Blow naman! Well, first basic here that I, uh, that I observed was yung... Yung meet-up ni Sakura with Ishinomi. I thought... Hindi na pa naman babaan nito si Ishinomi. Eh, ito si Ishinomi ang kakampi ng king to ah! But, why is... Why is he meeting up with this guy? Yung pala, merong pinapa sabong itong si Ishinomi kay Keroto. And I think the king now knows that Sakura is Keroto's handler. Kaya so I think they're just going through the proper channels right now. Why did I call this a gear shift? Ain't it obvious? Sakura will go to um, great lengths as to uh promote her new ward uh, abilities as a uh, as a card battler. Well, we all know what happened in the pilot. Tinalo siya nito eh. So, but if you still remember what Sakura said when when Teroto beat her, I am betting everything on you. So right there and then, uh, she now has that commitment of, of being Teroto's handler. So if you're a handler, Kailangan mag-effort ka rin na masarap ng kalaban para sa, sa alaga mo. And that's what he got. Obviously, he has embraced that goal. Even, uh, even contact um, people who are allied with the king. Ngayon nga, si Ikinomi. So, Nilipers siya ng kalaban. Ayun nga si Ed. <laughs> Talagang mapaglaro talaga na eh. Second gear ship was... Well, was when uh, Teroto and Angel met for the second time, pero this time to battle. I don't know why Teroto isn't to battle. Pero si Angel, oo, oh, oh, nasurpresa sa rito. Siguro hindi sinabi sa kanya ni Sakura kung sino kalaban niya. Ayun nga. And he find, finds out the hard way that Teroto is, is fucking good. Teroto has what it takes to beat the king. And, well, and you found that out first time. That's why it was the gear ship. Final gear ship was the final scene. Right? It's a very disturbing gear ship. You can safely conclude that the king really wants Teroto as an opponent. Mukhang naglaban na ang dalawang ito before. And she grew I think yung huling laban nila. And, um, I think Terrell doesn't remember any of it. Kasi, I don't know, if he, yeah, if he, if he has, uh, amnesia or something, well, obvious, hindi niya matandaan yung mga, yung nakaraan niya. And, Sakura is actually helping him to redeem his memory. That's why I call it the gift. Dahil, looks like the king, really wants uh, another go at Teroto. Kaya siguro, we can see na siya talaga ang nag-refer ng kalaban para kay Teroto just to either 
toughen him up or see how he has grown as a battler. Either of those two things or both. These three gear shifts that I saw, all three of them will play a role in the game. As far as I'm concerned, Teroto has just earned himself another ally. He, he got pushed to the limits here. Sa, sa battler na to. And talagang, wow. Despite all that, he, he got it back to the wall. He still has faith in his deck and his ability to the battler. Kaya niya matalo. Kaya eventually matalo. Plotwise. Sa sobrang limits ng plot, you even got to see how... Uh, what kind of person Teroto is outside of battling? He has his craving, but he loves bread. <laughs> and he hates food. Uh, I've, seen this, I've seen this kind of personality before in the card game. And, well, he loves what, um, what he is. What he is in love with the most is battling. I, uh, I think all aspects of, uh, of Teroto's personality have been shown in this episode. That's what the plot made me realize. I say, well, he won't, he won't pay attention to Sakura if it concerns bread. And then, if it, uh, if it concerns, uh, battling. Pag pinagsabay mo ang battling at saka, uh, uh, bread and pastry, patulay mo niya bread and pastry. <laughs> He's a sort of a present species connoisseur. Uh, he doesn't care if he, he already has uh, too much carbohydrates in his body. So, uh, he'll just he'll just waste that all in a battle, in a, in a part battle, right? So that's what this that's what this the part of this episode will make you realize. So, oh, in these kinds of things, we're gonna be classic plot. He might have not explored what kind of a person Tero is. Yes, he is driven as a battler. He really wants to beat the team. But, he's only human. He has to do it. So, face, floor, and slot. We all get together for the Tero. And, Bobby setting up up for more hard battles between Tero and other players. Or, uh, he can actually, uh, uh, you know, actually has the initiative to, to explore the ropes on how to effectively battle. You know. So, Build Divide Gold Black Episode 3. He's going to start battle team. I am always a sucker for, uh, for dual scenes and card battle scenes because eh? this is what makes a card game anime a card game anime. Tandaan niyo, not every card game anime is Yu-Gi-Oh! Ako tanggap ko yan. There's Vanguard, there is, uh, yan, Build Divide, there is also Wingstop, pero hindi naman ka talaga uh, as a card game. Kumbaga, Binis lang talaga sa anime yung card game. But here, uh, in the case of Build Divide, uh, talaga ito, nauna ang card game dito. So, they just created an anime around it. That, that makes it really among all the other card game animes. Ano kung pagkakas, Bakugan. Bakugan is all the card game. Although meron siyang tinatapon na parang hook. Balit na robot na ganun. But, it still involves cards. It's still a card game anime. Kaya, if you haven't uh, tried watching a single card game anime in your family life, you might as well do it now. I think it's real device. Uh, Masarap dinamay sa mga ibang card game anime. Although I am a Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Pero, kung maging sa ganito, real device, yeah. You're, this is the first time to watch a card game anime. Don't even want to. Again, build the 
my gold black. Episode 2? Uh. What do we do now? Simple. We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Let's see what Light is still happening for us. Card battle yan. Format na format lang, alam ko. Format na format lang, trick na trick na yan. So, in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.